Good evening, Innsmouth. This is your friendly neighborhood Goblin King with 665.66 UHMR Camrat Radio coming to you tonight from Mama Kaz's Noodle House. Her primo Liz Gizzard egg ramen is still one of the best things in the hive. Doesn't have a toilet rating yet, but you know, it just takes time. Intergalactic truckers got to get access to it before they can rate it. You know, I'm still getting to it. I blog every now and then about how many toilets I rate the specific foods and recipes of the hive. For right now, we're looking at a solid 3.5 toilets. Tom spent about 2.5 toilets on the toilet, so we will see how many more she can get. I thought blog was the noise that you made when you went to the toilet. On a good day. (laughs) On a bad day, it's like... (laughs) As always, I am joined by my co-hosts, the food blogging maniac, Marky. What it is, hoes. As always, we are joined by Beast, who's over there crafting us all sorts of new tech gadgets to use in the upcoming Murder Ball season. Hello, everyone. How are those coming, Beast? Pretty good. I've only broken my thumbs twice. <laughs> the same one both or thumbs. both? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> you mean they always look like that? They always, they always kind of bend in and out at the same time. It's strange. And relinquishing his top throne spot, holding down the broken digit crown is Kev. How do you feel about losing, tumbling off the broken finger mountaintop? Well, I'm sure, you know, when I hit uh, rock bottom once again, I'll have a few more broken bones to, you know, climb back up with. You, you think you'll break some toes this time? Do you have any replaced toes? No, nah, all my toes are good. Although I'm pretty sure I've probably broken one or two at some point, you know, like minorly. The Ripper Doc just pretty much tells Kevin that he has all his digits, but in actuality, he's lying. <laughs> Do you have one of those, like, frequent customer punch cards from the Ripper Doc, Kev? Oh, uh, dude, he doesn't even bother anymore. I'm just like a frequent flyer VIP over there. Yeah, he's got, like, a credit he card just, and everything. You know, it, I think, zone, I, zone think I pay for my early boarding. I think it's mostly like a hobby for him. He's like, I'm going to see how many times I can put this guy back together before he stops coming back. <laughs> yeah, Kevin's lost so many toes <laughs> that the punch card just ran out of punches. So it's like, oh, you know, nine toes, you get the 10th free. Kevin's on like toe 20. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is part six of our Astra Militarum coverage. We are going to talk about regiments and then about the auxilia. So we're going to cover abhumans and a couple other things that the Imperium uses in their war machine. Before we jump into it, though, you guys have any anything you wanted to wrap up with any of the history stuff? Anything that you, you feel I left out, guys? Is everybody pretty good? I think we were pretty solid heading all the way up into the Indomitus era essentially right yeah and we've got a couple of we i think we uncovered a couple of planets that we're going to need to cover a little bit more in depth and we've mentioned armageddon cadia and, uh, and katachan it, it's funny because katachan thank in you creek whatever planet in, in creek, yeah. is that the name of their planet creek all, planet is named creek yeah yes. creek uh, and the regiment is technically the death core of creek it's interesting because a lot of the planets that we're talking about, obviously being Imperial planets, have a lot of connection to the Imperial Guard. So uh, it'll be it'll be cool. It'll be interesting. We'll have to bounce into some Tau planets and some Eldari planets and some Orc planets. Uh, although Armageddon will get Armageddon or Orcageddon. Armageddon Orc-a-geddon. will get a little bit of Orc that, crossover. That, Orc-a-geddon. That Ermageddon right there. Ermageddon. <laughs> Ermageddon. Fat man planet. Oh yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, the demon worlds. Yeah, that's yeah that's we'll it. definitely do some demon worlds. <laughs> All right. So, Get Kev, unbodied. start us off. <laughs> start us off by talking about some Cadians. Cadia, I mean, we just went over Cadia, uh, but what we didn't go over is that Cadians are raised from childbirth. They're, they're the kind of like joke is field strip and reassemble a lasgun by the time you're 10. And so Cadians are born soldiers. They also have giant fortress cities. Well, did, not anymore. AKA the the Kazars, uh, which we then That's how uh, fucked it's gotta be if you're like you're born a soldier and they still die in fucking droves. <laughs> well, I mean Yeah. Yes and no. The Cadians, because of the way that their doctrine basically is of stand here and shoot a shit ton and don't it they only die in droves if the enemy gets into range. It's yeah, like, I know. I'm just like like lore wise. I just think I just think that's funny. Oh yeah, definitely. But also, you know, as long as the Cadian soldiers are the ones dying and the tanks aren't dying, then, you know, job, mission accomplished. 
The Cadians but, um, are probably the the poster ish boy of the Imperial Guard. Oh, 100%, I mean, they're the they are the ultramarine of the Imperial 110%. Guard. One hundred and ten percent. Most of the stories are written about, written about Cadians. The most of the kits that are sold are Cadians. All the yeah. heroes are Cadians. All much. well, th- I mean, think about it. all the artwork of is Cadians. Yeah, of except for the design. very specific ones that are like that. Each regiment has like two or three. Like, there's one of Australians fighting Tau, and the right. Tau are losing terribly because no, I'm leg. saying the artwork <laughs> as in like with the models oh, like that they the, showcase. Oh yeah, yeah, they're yeah. all they, Cadians. Yeah, like, yeah. Whenever they come out with something new, it's Cadian. It's Cadian. Yeah, yeah, because they don't make other kits. Right. They they limited run the Vostroyans for a little while, uh, but they still do make the Catachans. Next on the list, these guys are the jungle fighters. Uh, this is where the uh, Dylan, you son of a bitch, goes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, God damn it, I'm here. Come kill me. Yeah, get to the chopper and all that get stuff. Get to the baby bunky bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Who is they your are, mother? What's it's, not a, what <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> Dylan, it, you mean that shit I ate for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, who is your Lichter, daddy? I hardly who? knew her. Oh God, <laughs> I licked her. I hardly knew her. Yeah, so the the Catachans are one of my favorite. There's a lot of cool stuff with the Catachans. I pulled out a couple. There's the 17th Swamp Rats, the 24th Waiting Death, and the 16th Screaming Devils, and they all have like different ways of fighting. Yeah, Catachans they, are pretty cool. Their yeah. their main thing is they live on a jungle planet, and just by yeah, like, living to the age of ten is a a miracle, like kind of Australia or something like that. It's like Australia, Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? The swamp rats excel at fighting and hunting down tyranids. The waiting death excel at hunting down orcs, and the screaming devils are just kind of all around ambush specialists, but they get their name from hunting down the Catachan Devils, which is a, a critter on Catachan. It's super nasty. It's a centipede and a scorpion. So is there like what they specialize in and how they look? Catachans? Can we do can we, do oh, we have yeah, that yeah. information handy? I, I mean, I know what they all look like. Yeah, so uh, to go back to Cadians really quick, Cadians are very, very standardized the way that we look at Imperial Guard. They've got the, the flak armor on Marines. top of, yeah, they got the flak armor vest on top of like what the khaki is and then they've got a battle helmet. Catachans. Yeah, you've got, a, you've got a helmet, a chest piece, and then some shoulder pads that goes with it. And then other than that, you just got basic webbing gear, pants and boots. Mm. Yeah, Catachan yeah, jungle fighters have camouflage LBDs pants. and pecs of steel, and, baby. V- and vests, and a lot of times they, their vests are open. <laughs> yeah, they'll either they wear, wear no lots of red bandanas. Or a, mm. They'll wear, like, no flak vest and, like, yeah. just a shirt. Pecs or of they'll wear a flak vest with no glass. shirt. It, it's kind of a personal preference, but that's because they're on a super hot planet and where like, their clothes will melt off. <laughs> their clothes will either rot off their body as fabrics right. tend to do. I in think a jungle uh, Chalk actually talked about that. How like yeah. when he was in the jungle, like he was his saying clothes, like, his clothes disintegrate. Were, yeah, it's crazy. And then, but also a bu- like any plants that get a hold of your gear. Yeah, like does the plants will drag you into the jungle and eat. It's like you. A no no capes. Yeah, no we'll capes. Ta- exactly. No capes. Exactly. It's exactly that. We'll cover a Catachan, the planet of Catachan. Oh, yeah. Episode. Absolutely. And we'll, and, yeah. It's a great example of a death world. Wait, we're, is at this point, example. example of a death world. At this point, I think we're like contractually obligated to mention the fact that we're going to talk about Catachan like 10 or 11 times throughout the year until Tom is like, stop talking about it and cover it. <laughs> but we <laughs> will true. cover it. <laughs> But uh, we will Katachin, cover it eventually. Katachin um, think, has the number one single that. soldier in the Imperium, though. As much as I, Sli- I Sly like Marbo. Others. Yeah, <laughs> ah! he's he's back. He's back. To, I don't know if you guys can see on the on the camera, but there's a row of figures up there, and those oh, are all one? a bunch of the. Yeah, I've been trying to nice. collect all the heroes. Adrian, <laughs> I have a Sly. bunch of the. Imperium. Not gonna lie. Part of me wants to print out the uh, President Zelensky little like 3D print model that somebody put up in support of Ukraine. Oh, oh really? I don't know if you've seen it, but somebody yeah. somebody basically printed out a dude in that's supposed to, it looks like the President of Ukraine, and he's got like a futuristic looking AK. Oh damn! Okay. And he's Imperial it, Guard sized, and that's he's like one you see the... the AK and pointing the pointing in a different direction. I want to get him out and like run him as a commander or something, or Sly <laughs> Marbo or something. <laughs> did you see the um? Did you see the guy that had done Chaos Space Marine dead on the ground, and there's a sunflower growing next to it? Oh Fuck yeah. shit! <laughs> yeah, nice. All right, Sly Marbo. So Sly Marbo is uh 
he's the one man super soldier. He's actually the Rambo of yep. Cat Chan. Of 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 the Rambos. <laughs> he's the he's Rambo literally. of Rambos. Yeah, he's not necessarily super great in the game, but his lore is pretty crazy. Like he, he there's uh there was one book I was reading where he he was literally there and the the book isn't about him. It's about a normal Cat Chan guy and he's like they're doing their mission. And they weren't even told that Sly was even in the area. Yeah. He just creeps out of the jungle. Well, because he's like a one-man army guy, right? He doesn't even listen. He The command doesn't even get authority over him at this yeah. point. He yeah. literally showed up on this battlefield, murdered a shit ton of orcs, and then like whispered from the other side of a tree to this Katachan was like, your turn to kill the rest. And then like left. And you never ass. see him for the rest of the book. That's it. And, he's and got like one line. Ass. And like, and then they walked in there and like shit's already fucked up kind of thing. <laughs> and it's totally a rip on, on oh, the it's character totally, Rambo. Yeah. Because it's it's yeah. it's Sly as in Sylvester Stallone and then Marbo as in Rambo, just spelled differently. Yeah, they they totally t- did it on purpose. But uh Katachans have a cool, they're like one of their weird quirks that I learned from one of the books that I read is their like their macho man attitude is also part of like their lineage is only recorded by somebody has to survive to tell the story. Mm. Yeah. So if if nine out of ten dudes die, that tenth man, his duty to the regiment is to go back home and tell everybody how badass everybody else died. That's badass. Like yeah. It's like three hundred with what's the, yeah what, yeah when he, when he tells the, the one dude to be like go back and tell them yeah, how we all remember, died. I can't remember his damn name. He has such Quintus. a cool name. Yeah. What is it? Is that Quintus? the dude that yeah that loses? Quintus. I don't think Does that's he, he, like, he loses the eye. Yeah, he lost an eye and then was all like fucked up and couldn't fight as well. And he, and then Leonidas is like send him home so everybody knows we died like heroes. But yeah, so that's that's one of the things. And they also they you have their special knife is called the <laughs> or, um yeah, the, the, Aristodemus. They, yeah, really they have their the their yeah. special each one has a special knife and it's like unique to the individual. Yeah, they're nice. Dilios. Yeah. So that His name was Dilios. S- so the swamp rats specifically were led by Colonel Gator. They fought for seven years against a tyrannid horde on the world of Krakakal Seven. Teams oh, of nice. highly experienced Nid hunters covered their bodies in the ichor of aliens they had slain to build up an immunity to the toxins and mask them. After successfully wiping out the entire tyrannid swarm, the swamp rats had to spend two years aboard decontamination ships. Jesus. <laughs> Get and I, that and I'm pretty sure out of here. I'm pretty sure when I've seen swamp rats painted, they're painted with like purple-ish camo to like represent all of the like icky crap that's on them. Tyranid gross. The old those of you who are who subscribe to Patreon can see this. I've got the old Catachan splat and like there's all of these like cool fucking like one liner things in it. They're pretty neat. Next up Steel Legion. Steel Legion is uh the like super industrial vibe. Their planet, as we've been over a little bit, is manuf- uh, has a lot of manufacturers on it. Their stuff is all like very it's much Armageddon. made to it. Yeah, it's made to Armageddon standard. They have their own <laughs> version of a lot of stuff. So there's an Armageddon basilisk. There's an Armageddon, you know, this. Like pattern. Through. Yeah, Armageddon pattern basilisk. It's fully enclosed so that way the environment, the ash waste of the volcanic waste mm-hmm. doesn't interfere with the operation of the basilisk. Oh, that's cool. And that's cool. it has a rotating turret. Uh-huh. Unlike the normal basilisk, whose turret is basically fixed forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so their stuff is all made in-house, essentially, for their planet specifically. It's usable everywhere else, obviously. Right, right. But it was designed for use locally, kind of like how Cadian standard pattern yeah. was made on Cadia, and then they were like, "Man, this works great for everybody. Let's just use it everywhere." Right, right. So yeah, that's that's how that worked for them. And then yeah, they're the ones gas masks, tan jackets, because their planets yeah. mostly desert. Mm-hmm. It does have other biomes. You were saying hot, that they're reminiscent boots. of World yeah. War One. They're they're like no, they're like they're... Krieg, except they're not a gray and black palette. They're a brown and tan palette. They're very much tan Kriegsmen in a way, yeah. but less less trench warry, more mechanized. They're they're heavy mechanized um, infantry focus. Desert Fox, uh, the first the first chunk of the battle of World War II that was all fought mechanized fought in Africa. In Africa, yeah, the mechanized Africa divisions yeah. from both sides kind of mesh together. Oh, okay, yeah. and uh, lot of- but yeah, there's. There's that their aesthetic sweet. is and like their I mean their doctrine in game is essentially deploy from transports get bonuses uh, yeah so and that that right. lends and that's why it's Steel Legion they deploy the Steel Legion gotcha and they've got a famous group called the Ar- Armageddon Orc Hunters which the Armageddon the planet of Armageddon which was used to be Ulanor. Ul- 
Ul Unur, thank you. I was like, I almost said Ulithay, and I'm like, that's a craft world. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually where the the one of the battle one of the big battle of the beast happened. So Armageddon mm -hmm. has lots of continuous orc struggle. Armageddon yeah. is another planet we plan on covering. Armageddon, as, as we've been be mentioning Ulithay. for over almost a year now. That's your <laughs> oh, cue, yeah. Tom. It's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> but, yeah, Tom, um, you're supposed to yell at us for not doing the Armageddon episode yet. I'm I'm way deep into this. Yeah. Armageddon so those ones, right now. those ones that you're talking about specifically went out into the swamps because there is a swamp tropical region of Armageddon, believe it or not. Oh. It's a, it's a shitty volcanic wasteland for most of the planet, except that there's also a swamp. Nice. Which is not like, much better. But perfect for orcs, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Awesome. Great. Yeah, mo awesome. Thanks. Moist, dark. Thanks. <laughs> it's a little a little jungle for the orcs. Mushroom. But they go hang out in that jungle, and they're like, we're going to kill as many orcs as we fucking can. Oh, the, uh, the specialist ones. There's the specialist ones yeah. that Ryan had brought up. That's their thing. They, Four countries. Oh, they're the Armageddon guys who are like, no APCs, only swamp. <laughs> no <laughs> APCs, <laughs> only swamp. Actually, fun fact, chimeras technically are amphibious. Yeah, yeah that, that would make sense. I can yeah. see that. Should be. It makes sense. Except in Arma, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took one into the water in the Arma mod, and it fucking sank. I was like, well, what yeah, but I mean, it also it shoots off into space, like, randomly, too. Well, uh, yeah, when you, when the machine spirits. <laughs> when you get that desync, man, it's dem, like, dem boom! Dem machine spirits. Dem dem machine desync spirits. Yeah. Let's see, moving along. Vestroyans. The Vestroyans. Oh, Vestroyans. Glory Vestroyan to Vestroya. First. Firstborn sons, yeah. most heroic sons of all Vestroya. We will kill many orcs and many heretic scum. He's been waiting months to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love the Vestroyans. Uh, I think their aesthetic is super dope. Super space Cossacks, which is not exactly Russian, but close enough. So they're the, like, they have like red. Red, they, uh, they are the red and brass uh, guardsmen. Mm -hmm. They they typically have that kind of like brass colored armor, copper colored armor. They have the yeah, big, uh, bare, okay. big bare skin caps, yeah, that are yeah, super yeah. tall that look like the British guards. Yeah, yeah. It's like and that hat, but on like a Russian long coat. That's cool. It looks. And I think the rifles, aesthetic is dope. Their rifles are, are wood. Yeah, they they have their own pattern of rifle as well. Oh, they again make all their gear in house, and that's because Might as well, right. Yeah, so the little the little mini history for Vostroya and the reason the the firstborn is a thing is during the heresy, Vostroya was a mechanic technically not a Mechanicus Forge world, but during the Dark Age of Technology, it didn't get laid into quite as hard because they had a lot of technology on the planet already. So right. as it survived, they kind of were their own independent thing, mm -hmm. separate from the Mechanicus. And then when the Mechanicus showed up, they're like uh, semi-autonomous. We'll allow it. Hmm. And so there's like a dual governance. There's the normal civilian governance, yeah. and then there's like the Mechanicum oversight that work with the, what are actually called Tetrarchs, and that's who governs the planet. But those guys in the Horus Heresy decided, you know, we're actually just a factory, so we're better off serving the Imperium as a factory. Oh. So no men for the Imperial Guard. Mm -hmm. or, you're okay. going to have to fight Horus with more bullets, less men, Instead of yeah. more men, less bullets. Uh, I see and then see. afterwards, because, you know, during that time, it's not like they could say no. Right. Afterwards, yeah. they're like, are you guys traitors? Because it, it kind of looks like you guys are traitors. And they're like, we're definitely not traitors. <laughs> please don't exterminate please, us. Please don't. We're not traitors. And they were like, you got to pay. You're going to pay, though. I know. You kind of look like fucking traitors. Uh, you kind of fucking look like traitors. <laughs> 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 and so they ended up basically coming to I a deal. I don't say he protests too much. <laughs> As, essentially, they came to a deal, and that was every firstborn child, uh, that was male first or female, thing. is automatically drafted. Dude, Every they, kid after that, yeah. nobody gives a shit. Nobody yeah. gives a fuck out how many kids you have after that. But every single firstborn, essentially the quote unquote best one, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Dude, the uh, the Voss pattern on this gun looks sick. Yeah, Voss patterns are cool. Oh, it's it like, like a like a it's like a bolter. Gun. Yeah, it looks like a grease gun from World War II. Yeah, uh, it looks like a bolter with a las gun. It's very Russian. Wagon. Yeah, it's they're like, oh, yeah. Russian AKs with that folding stock. We're gonna put that on a bolt. That's, on the, a, uh, yeah. las gun. That's the Elysian one. This one. Isn't it? No, this is the Voss. Oh, that's the, the Steel Legion one. Yep. Yeah. The Voss pattern is? Yeah, I think so. That's oh, what, it's, it's the short not one. Vostroyan? No, Vostroyan no, the, have the Vostroyan has like ones. A, it, the Vostroyan one is crazy looking. The Vostroyan one is super ornate because unlike every other regiment yeah. where it's like, "Oh, this soldier has died. Assign his gear to the locker." 
serial number, blah, 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 blah. In this one, due to the fact that it's only firstborn sons and daughters, only firstborn, that means uniquely to Vostroyans, they actually reinforce their units rather mm-hmm. than just rolling them into what's left standing into, you know, oh, continuous. Gotcha. Yeah. They do that as well when casualties are sufficient to, to warrant that. But in general, they just reinforce it with the next generation of troopers. So it's not uncommon to get your grandpa's gun. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right gnarly. So these are made to yeah, be yeah, that, passed that down as long family like wood thing. Oh, yeah, it's it looks super, like a musket. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, super it's dope, cool. Right? I think they're really super rad. cool. And they're they're my favorite aesthetics it looks like a, a musket with the handle, or I'm not not a musket. It looks like an M14, like the or not an M4. Yeah, M14. It's that's an M14 with, the, with yeah. like an ancient pistol. Handle. Yeah, with like a the pirate like pirate pistol, like hand. a pirate Thunder pistol Bus. handle. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, they're basically they're basically meant to look like flintlocks. Yeah, yeah, they're super yeah. sick. Yeah. I love them. Looking. I think they're super cool. Yeah, the arm the and Armageddon cool. Steel Legion one definitely looks like an AK with a folding stock. Yeah, it's because it's and meant then the tall the taller ones look the closest to like a M sixteen or an M four battle rifle. Yeah, yeah, I want to look at all the las guns. Um, I think that's actually one of the cool things about Gar is the las gun can be made in a bunch of different ways yeah, to make like it that. useful. Configuration. We didn't even really go over like weapons and equipment for standard Gar. We've been doing all this Gar stuff. We never even went Episode over episode like, six. I mean, or did we start with it? It's been so long. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do it. Well, yeah, we we definitely let let's let's keep we're gonna have a the regiments. Well, let's get the regiments yeah. out of the way. We'll, we'll right. definitely so, have another uh, weapons episode. The, the best the best videos or pod or like stuff is when they're like weapons and tech. You know what I mean? Like those mm-hmm. are the good ones because then you can focus in detail. On That's them. true. We need to do just a weapons and tech Plus, for the guard. More not just for the guard. I think more the content would be dope. Yeah, yeah. we need well, we yeah, need to general. do it. We need to do a second episode of weapons and tech because we had our first. Right. One. That's true. That's true. All right, Kev, take us into Valhalla, Valhallans. To Valhalla. But you, so probably the coldest world in the Imperium. It used to be a temperate paradise, and then a massive comet struck the planet, sending it off orbit and filling the sky with clouds and debris. As if that wasn't bad enough. And then an orcs that, came up. And came. orcs. <laughs> and then orcs came. So it's Armageddon, but cold. Yeah, it's Frozen yeah. Geddon. Froze again, gotcha. Yeah. Fro- and, froze uh, again. and then they were like, no, this is my shithole. Fuck you, orcs. Get out of here. <laughs> and they fought, <laughs> believe it or not, they fought off orcs just for a shitty fucking ice planet. <laughs> but <laughs> it's there. It's like careening out their of its orbit, but it's their planet. shitty fucking ice it's planet. It's like our like. shitty ice planet. And uh, these guys are the... They're totally the World War II like, They're Russian, World War II Army. Russian Army, but also Finnish Army. Like gear wise, yeah, yeah. That, it's that, very yeah. much more the like so, Finns and the Swedes version of winter war gear. So, so there, people who don't know what that looks so like, they've what got like? they've got a long great cloak that's blue, and then <laughs> they've just say got blue, it's fine. Yeah. And then they've got shut um, up, Tom. It's okay. He can't even find Finland on a map. <laughs> and then they've got <laughs> we're not talking uh, about like, me right now. They've got the like uh, not not the fur. Yeah, they've got kind of like the fur cap that like it's goes the, down over the, the lumberjack ears. hat. The yeah. hat that you see Canadians and Russians both wearing, yeah, they're wearing those. Yeah. Okay, with and the then, long and then they've coats. got yeah, yeah with a long, big long thick clothes. ass jacket. And oh, then um, okay, okay. You know how when they the, usually have like their gear, like their um, they're like not they have like a bags, satchel but, like yeah. bag. You know how you know how like really really poor old militaries. It, you didn't have a backpack. You like had a blanket. You rolled all your stuff in and wore yep. it like a satchel. They have yeah, that. They basically. Have oh, okay. That. Because this, the Valhallans, because their planet is so shitty, are just expected to carry everything they need with them wherever they go. Interesting. So they just carry all that crap. Thank you for yeah. clarifying. And that for all our listeners also, who don't know. Mm-hmm. fun fact, yeah, yeah. Bonus, bonus thing is having all that crap in there essentially functions as a little bit of armor. Up armor. So if somebody tries to come <laughs> shik- stick a bayonet in you and you've got your mess tin over your belly, yeah. it's go plink. You're like, ah. You're like, my rations. <laughs> yeah, my I rations. Have, I absolutely love it. <laughs> Tom's up armor. <laughs> up armor. That's a, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, but that that actually was a, a thing that was noted about those that's that style of uniform is that it did give you that slight benefit yeah, for get, like one sword swing. It would, mm-hmm. it would you get hit with out. the last gun, you're like, like your rations are cooked now. Sometimes you yeah. find hey, look at that meal's ready to eat. Yeah. Sometimes you find a hubcap, it's a plate and a chest protector. So it goes from corp, corp starch to corp corpse scorch. Yeah, what is that? It is it corp, corpse corn. Is it, is it in Riddick where he finds the plate yep. and he like digs exactly, it out with his toe? That is exactly what it is. Puts on his chest and he goes up armor and then walks yeah. off. 
<laughs> I was like, he's uh, accurate. He's like, really accurate. And uh, but their whole like army thing is that like because life is so shitty that, on Valhalla, like just going to war is just kind of normal, like whatever. Mm-hmm. And life is like, who gives a fuck? They're all so depressed that they don't give a shit. Oh, really? Yeah, they're uh, like it, on the board. Their vehicles degrade half as slow as everybody else's kind of thing. <laughs> huh. like, we who gives we don't care so much. We we survive long. Commander, radio man dead. Oh well, keep firing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's right. that's them. They have a couple other. They're the only ones who can shoot into melee. So no tabletop stuff. Yeah, it's they're willing to. What is their lore in behind? Lore wise, they're willing to kill their own men with like Stal- machine gun fire and yeah, stuff. Battle, battle at Stalingrad. We, we've all seen Enemy at Gates. You saw Enemy at Gates. No, you should. You should. You'd like it. There, okay. There's a scene. Com- uh, commissar. This is very. It's this, this is super yeah. imperial guard related. This you've never perfect. you've never seen that. Like, I think you're just fucking with us. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no I'm Probably, serious, I'm the serious. the one with the rifle shoots. The one with the bullets follows him. When like, the one with the rifle gets killed, the one with the bullets picks up the rifle. No, that's like, dude, it's okay, like so, the iconic so, like Russian charge. I yeah. and, I mean, this is also exaggerated for Hollywood's sake, but yeah, hundred percent. But so there's literally a a supply truck parked at one side of the river and all these guys are getting boated across as German planes are fucking strafing the shit out of them. And they don't even have guns yet. They just have their like basic uniform on and it's freezing ass cold. They, they get onto the other side of the river and then there's a commissar yelling through a megaphone. He says, with what first man gets rifle, second man gets ammunition. Like literally this, the, the first guy gets the gun. The second guy doesn't get a gun. Oh, yeah, because they don't have enough. They don't have enough guns, but yeah. they have enough what bullets. Is, what was the name of the movie? Enemy, Enemy of the, the Gates. Gates. Okay. It's a pretty good and, movie. And then they, the whole point is the commissar then tells them to charge forward. The guy with the rifle is supposed to charge and shoot. He's going to die before he needs to reload because he's only issued five rounds, the, yeah. the one magazine for the Mosin. And the next guy gets two, two mags, essentially, ten rounds, five each, and that's it. So huh. he's expected to then pick up the weapon reload and continue firing yeah yeah and the goal is if we just send so many men the germans won't have enough ammo to to stop the ball and then then, to keep them from retreating instead of picking up the rifle they park a heavy machine gun and just mow down the ones that retreat yeah yep (laughs) that's where the whole commissar thing from 40 commissars are entirely pulled from that Okay. Commissar is a rank in is a, the, is a rank was a rank other, in the Red Army that did and it the, did it a lot a, of yeah. other things, but it was also responsible yeah. for shooting cowards in the back. They're called yeah, it was political a morale officer. Political yeah, political officers. morale officer. Yeah, or propaganda officer. Their yeah. job is is essentially to make sure that the army maintains the mentality that is pro state as, yeah. as, yeah. as in, instead of pro army. Gotcha. Ta- because take- pro army means coup. <laughs> Bring us home with the major, the major regiments yeah. of the Talaran uh, Desert Raiders. The last of the of the mainsies here ones. is the Talaran Desert Raiders, which uh, their world used to be super nice, beautiful gardens, lots of rivers, some palm trees and shit. And then uh, the Fire Nation attacked. Oh yeah, aka <laughs> that uh, all changed. AKA the Iron, Iron Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. Oh, and they virus bombed it. Oh. Yep. Right? Like, we can't, why can't we have anything nice? Yeah. Fuck Perturabo. <laughs> really, man? You were like the one Primarch that, like, could have been like, nah, fuck you, demons. I'm going to go just do my own thing and build uh, cool stuff on my own. And he didn't. He fired no. bomb. And he, he didn't. Did he fucking didn't. Sure didn't. <laughs> he didn't. He could have. I actually, I fully believe that was one of the Primarchs that could have just, like, dipped and just been like, I'm going to go do my own thing. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Uh, but, but he didn't. And he ended up trying to burn Talaran. And guess what? Talaran was like, cool, you burnt my planet, but it's still mine. <laughs> we're we're going to keep fighting, yeah. Again, very similar to the Valhalla and Ice Warriors mentality right. of, I don't care how shitty my planet is, it's still mine. Yeah. You fight for your hood. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. So they adapted to the desert warfare tactics due to the planet being garbage. They can yeah. only go up on top for so long. So basically, they just guerrilla warfared from bunkers. Hmm. And then the Iron Iron Warriors are like, cool, siege warfare. We could totally do this. And it's like, yeah. oh, man, 30 years have gone by. And we still haven't killed all these people. Yeah, and then right. they, they, they're they known for their tank divisions, too. They're known for their Lightning tank fast tank divisions. So they'll yeah. bury whole tank divisions in the sand, wait for a toxic storm oh, to come past. that's fucking sick. Yeah. yeah. So y- you've seen Gundam, right? Yeah. 
you remember when Sandrock is like buried in the sand with yeah. all his like desert buddies? Yeah, yeah. It's that. That's sick. And how like Sandrock comes out and then all the tanks come out and they're just blasting Zaku's all over the place. It's yeah. exactly that. That's dope. Okay. So they did that war across the entire planet mm-hmm. using those tactics. So how do these guys look? These guys look almost exactly like those guys. Imagine that. Like <laughs> they wear they, they wear head wraps yeah. and have curved swords. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Very Middle Eastern yeah. aesthetics. But they've got they've got one of the more modern, at least by like our standards, looking las guns. It, their they their do. las gun looks a lot like a, a highly efficient tactical weapon. Yeah, it's they do have pup. some really cool tactical looks. It's a bullpup yeah. rifle, and uh, actually, they have a yep. really cool quote. I actually think that the like Middle Eastern names have a really cool sound to them. So mm-hmm. this this commander's got a cool name as well. So his his little saying about Talaran is. Um, be swift and silent as the breeze that crosses the dunes without stirring a grain of sand. Hmm. And that is Captain Al-Rahim. That's dope. I think if I were to do a, like, Fremen-based army, I would yeah. be taller on. That's what I was thinking. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be dope to do a, like, do them in still suits and stuff. Hell yeah. Those are the big ones that you guys can find, like, really easily in the book, but there's a Those lot of other stuff. Those are all in the Codex. Right. Yeah. Every single one of those is in the codex, uh, playable, has rules. Honorable mention. There's a bunch uh, of honorable mentions. Well, honorable we're not. Mention we're not tabletop. We're not done yet. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Oh, done no, no, I know. I know we're not done, but tabletop. Oh, okay. I mean, next honorable mention for tabletop would be Krieg. Right. They're a Forge World Army. Yeah. They right. have they have a book and rules. It's just not in the main codex. Right. We brought this up a couple times because Krieg is you know one of those things that people like to one of the oh, what fanboy. Is, what is armies. this one? I mean, it is. Kind of, it has a fanboy cult following. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's a memed army. And I think oh, Krieg has been memed all the way to the shovel and back. Yep. I mean, for for good reason. It does make a great joke. Their aesthetics is World War One. People are, are always like, oh, it looks like a Nazi, you know, a World War One version of a Nazi. And it's, no, it's very much more a French uniform with German yeah. aesthetics applied to it. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. after that's the actually fact. that's actually <laughs> the super uniform accurate. itself I, is almost a. Perfect copy of a World War One French. If you painted uh, them blue, they would be French from World War One. Which they were blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the French uniforms in World War One was a blue trench coat. Yeah, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Yeah, so they're, not very they're, camouflage, but that's what it was. Long and gray that, trench coats with lots of like black belts and and then the gas mask. The helmet Marky. being rounded as look. it is mm-hmm. is is very much more French World War One than it is German Picklehaub. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the, the German helmets had a spike on them, didn't they? Yeah, so that way when it, when the shit hit the fan, you could hit, all else fails, grab your helmet and beat somebody with it. And it was also very, uh, it was a crescent shape, was the original German helmet. Yeah, it had that nice little like, crest over the Well, it was crescent, it. meaning like the, the brim was here, oh, and right. it would come back and actually come up around the ear and then down, oh, whereas the French ones actually came around and down. Yeah. The yeah. more you know. Yeah, so there's That's a lot cool. of like aesthetic things on there, but it's, it's an amalgamation, essentially, of all things World War I stuck together. Right. Trench warfare. It's trench warfare. And that's because their planet, when it turned traitor, the one, the one loyalist outpost was like, oh, y'all look like traitors. And they were like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? And he pushed the big red button. Mm. Boop. Yeah, the Krieg will probably... Krieg is its own, its own nonsense. Episode. But it's another one where like everything... Like a Katachan, <coughs> Armageddon, Steel Yeah, Legion, so thing. Krieg, yeah. after that, he then, that commander then had to wage war against the surviving... Traitors. Traitors, uh, secessionists. Right. Because that's yeah. they weren't necessarily traitor traitors, which they are traitors by being secessionists, but the proper so, terminology, because they were part of the Imperium, and then they were like, why? So we're the, just going to do our own thing. So they they, they specialize in like trench warfare, dudes on horses, right? They have like they, special horse. They did. They, yeah, they've they got a horses. creepy special horse. The horses were left over from when Krieg was actually a knight. Before he nuked it, was also a paradise world, kind of. Oh. It was a paradise world. It was like a developing world. It was a developing mm-hmm. world. Very much yeah. kind of like our world where, you know, it's not fucked, but if right. they keep... Mm-hmm. Keep well, ramping so the, oh, well, the, the other specialization that they have is that they're like uber, uh, uber they're fucking. Sappers. Well, they're also. I think what he's getting at is willing to die for the emperor, right? So, right. and yeah, that's like highly, their, one of their meme, aggressive. One of their meme yeah. qualities is that, oh, ready to die for the emperor, sign us up. And yeah. it's it's not so much that that's every trooper's mentality. Their whole culture is 
if you're not working for the greaterness of the Krieg society, mm-hmm. then you're not working the for the greater Krieg. good. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially the greater good. I know I know Ryan was laughing already. I know, I, I know. It. But that's that's the philosophy is if you're the not working for players Krieg, then you're not working like, for Krieg. Uh, uh, or like, oh, we oh, get wait, you. we we totally get that <laughs> we idea. Get you. I got yeah. you. Instant willingness, want, obedience want, to orders. You want to turn traitor is again? Like sure. Yeah. It's not their real but, motto, but that's yeah. hey, I got a real greater good if you know what I mean. Dude, it's I, not even so much I that the Krieg meme are. puts it at die for the emperor. Right. And what that meme is taken, to, to, if you reach to the way back tendrils of the origins of that meme, is after Krieg was finally retaken in the name of... By the loyalists. By the loyalists, they sent re- uh, word back to, you know, the Department of Munitorum or whatever, and they're like, hey, we're ready to kick ass in the name of the emperor. And they were like, cool, give us like, we, since you're basically brand they, new to the they, Imperium again, they give, were us, like, give us 100,000 like, men. And they're like, we have 3 million. <laughs> Send yeah. us where you need us. And the other part and of they, they were like, oh, oh they, awesome. <laughs> they contacted the Imperium and they're like, hey, we, we solved our problem. You know, sorry we haven't paid our tithe in like whatever it was, like six generations. Like, we're ready to go yeah, again. It was, it was and, a long and the administratum time. and the administratum was like, wait, who are you? <laughs> like yeah, it was, the wait, Imperium had literally <laughs> forgotten about the planet Krieg. So after in the, the Imperium had time. told him to like nuke the planet to fuck the secessionists. They literally thought that was just going to blow the planet up and just be done with it. Yeah, yeah. they were just going to deny it. Yeah. Again, we can existed. we can have a Krieg episode. So yeah. so we'll get we, we'll we, get we, some we'll more get, of that. Yeah. But essentially, because they had to rage that war, they built all their own gear. Right. That's why Krieg has their own shit. Gotcha. All right, so and now then, we can go on to honorable mentions. Honorable Actual. mentions. Yes. Honorable mentions. mentions. Yeah. So we mentioned what the Kriegs look, the Kriegsmen look like. So the uh, I think. Uh, Mordian Iron Guard oh, is what right. I have. They're, I always forget they're in the Codex, but oh, okay. nobody plays them because their doctrine yeah. is trash. <laughs> but Mordians, they have a really cool bit of lore as well, and they're all. I think they're one of like the weird underrated ones. Mm-hmm. So yeah. their planet is unique in the fact that it doesn't really rotate. What? Wouldn't that be like a dead planet? No. No, nah, tidally locked. They Yeah, tidally locked. So oh, okay. it's like the moon where one side always faces the sun right. and one side always faces the dark. So there's a string in the twilight zone <laughs> uh, where people can live. Oh, uh, okay. And the shittier and poorer you are, the more into the sun you have to live. <laughs> and the richer you are, the more into the like perfect yeah, like zone. Tropical zone. Yeah, there, there's, you know, obviously there's a better spot and a worse spot to live right, in, in, right. This, in this narrow ribbon that goes around the whole planet. <laughs> And the shittier you are, you're either in more in the sun or more in the shade, where it's either oh, really cold man. or really hot. That's gnarly. Yeah. yeah. And so, and the other thing is, obviously, there's nowhere to farm on this planet, so there's very little food. Uh, so this means that the, basically to stay in power, the government was like, we need the best fucking police to, like, crush riots. So they got, like, our and, the, like, basically, up the ass. Basically, the Mordian Iron Guard are, is what happens when the governor's, like, martial law all the time. All the time. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and and they, so... They're, they're very, very well dressed. They're very, very well drilled. They're very, very professional. Discipline is each their one is thing. like basically a judge dread. Yeah. Oh, okay. In a way, I mean, they don't go around individually. They always act in formation. No, but like and them being like, "This is the law. This yeah, is the so, way it goes." So, like, say there's a food riot. Normally, the Arbides would show up. They'd link shields together, fire a couple rubber bullets into the audience, and yell "Disperse!" Kind of like. Right, normal riot police, and then they'd go in and start beating people with shock malls and then use real bullets. Mordians are like, oh, there's a food riot. Let's form a line. We're going to give fire. them 10 seconds, and then yeah. we're going to kill them all. <laughs> mm. And then they just yeah. start shooting. There's no... There's, there's no gray area. There's no gray area. Mordian, mm. Once the Mordians show up, it's shoulder to shoulder, first rank fire, second rank fire. Mm. Done. And if, yeah, if you're and not the, gone. Yeah, and, and that's, more, it. That's, that's how they operate. And the Mordians have blue dress uniforms that look a lot like dress blues. They're uh, somewhere between uh, Marine Corps dress blue I was gonna say and like Marine Civil Corps. War uniform. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I'd say like also too like Sea Captain. That's the yeah. Civil War kind yeah. of in- influence. The, the, gotcha. the hardboard so shoulders with the mm. little dangly epaulets and yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Everything's trimmed in red. They usually have like knee, not knee, but like calf high boots. And they all wear... Like they all wear white style the white hats, and then they they do this. They are this not thing. white anymore. No, no you know what I'm talking about. They're blue, where, they where are the, blue now. The hat getting ah, uh, hat's getting white real stuff. low. 
Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah, that's they, the they, thing. They've got, like, blue captains, like, uh, like blue Navy hats with the black visor. Yeah. I don't even know what that, like, a captain is. There, is there a reason why they're not white anymore? Dare um, I ask? I thought, I, I've seen a bunch of, really? Okay. Yeah, they, their official art. Their official art no longer looks exactly like Marines in dress blues because the Marine Corps is a another IP and technically Games yeah, Workshop wasn't wasn't able to trademark the look of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> I didn't think it looked enough like dress blues for them to have that issue though. Oh, I straight up thought uh, it was I, like yeah, it, Marine Corps dress me, blues. When really? I saw. Yeah. To, to I me, know it, I've to seen me it looking at times the pewters, that I know the difference. But but yeah, but looking at the pewter models, it's really obvious where they got their influence. Oh, so, it's a hundred percent obvious where it came un, from. Un, unpainted pewter models, one hundred. But it, yeah, uh, I, that I, might um, be it. Unpainted, it might look too similar. So what do these guys specialize in? They specialize in lining up shoulder to shoulder and delivering yeah, they, just las rank punishing after, las just, fire. That's it. That's if their that thing. were even, if that was even even yeah, thing. punishing they, amounts of las fire. They're also. They're also known for pinpoint accuracy with their artillery, and they're known for fighting. Uh, there's a lot of their th- precision. Like, they have a mm. lot of chaos stuff. So this is the first, you know, the Catachans. There's some Tyranid stuff, and then there's there's several that are like orc stuff, and then there's the Toleron that have like a 30k, a Horus Heresy chaos connection. The Mordians have a modern chaos connection. So it's not uh, okay. it's not and heresy. It's le- it's not traitor legions. It's like New the school heresy. heresy. <laughs> yeah. It's because most of the time those food riots that we were talking about, right. the Demordians, they're caused by chaos cultists trying it's, to start it's, bullshit. Uh, it's, it's hip chaos, okay, guys? But <laughs> also, also, their planet didn't get made shittier. It just got invaded it by demons. Uh, it was shittier. <laughs> it and, just was shitty. <laughs> and the Imperium was like, oh, man, that sucks. And believe it or not, the Mordians actually beat the demons. Nice. Because they because they're so used to fighting in the streets against riots. Right. When a bunch of demons just come running amok through the cities, they basically just like lined up in the right alleyways and everything and just murdered them all as they ran by. Yeah, yeah. Because they mean, don't it, care about what else is in that crowd. They're yeah, like they don't care if the civilians are intermixed with it. They just got them all down. Yeah, they're probably dead anyway. Yeah. Uh, the demons got them. Yeah. Uh, this, sir, this, got this looks like a Lazarus wound. No, nah, it totally looks like a yeah. corn sword hole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do you, do you a corn sword hole? Sword hole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a corn hole, but with a sword. Corn hole. I like it. It's a corn hole. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next uh, uh, honorable but then, mention. Um, I would say next honorable mention, in my opinion, would be Tanith first and only. They're uh, the ones with the most lore. Which we could probably they do. They have a lore. lot of lore. We'll, we'll definitely have some Tanith stuff. I mean, stuff, they have multiple omnibus. Cover mm. To cover them briefly, the Tanith. This is Gaunt's Ghost, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Tanith, first and only. There's only one regiment from the planet because the planet was destroyed before anybody else could be mobilized. And the unique part of the planet, the thing that makes their soldiers special, is that the trees move they're around dead. at night. Yes. The trees moved around at night. So they're very, very good pathfinders and very, very re- good reconnaissance officers because their environment they grew up in, the, the environment that they came up in, constantly kids, changed. Constantly mm-hmm. changed. So they became very good pathfinders. Woodsmen. Um, naturalists, yeah, they, things like that. Mm. They're one of the only Imperial Guard regiments that, even though there's a bunch of lore on them, that you you can't, you really can't play them unless you're doing your own thing, which is cool. Like, if you make an entire Tanith first and only army, that'd be dope. Uh, there's a bunch of people that do. They run yeah. they run the Gaunt's Ghost kit as their, because it's an HQ slot. I know we try right. to stay away from tabletop, but... It is doable. You run it, and then there are some custom doctrines that the, the community has kind of, you know, Hand-picked. as a as a group, pigeonholed into. These are the ones that fit the Tanith Gaunt's Ghost theme only. best. Gotcha. Uh, we can go over that when we do the Gaunt's Ghost. Yeah, Maybe yeah, put definitely. in a little sidebar about this is how you play them on tabletop. We'll go into that then. Yeah, so but it is what doable, they, and a bunch of these are, are doable in that way. Right. What do they look like? So... I would say they look like Scotsmen, except that there is actually a guard regiment that wears kilts, and these oh, yeah. ones are not them. <laughs> so, so I noticed Gon's ghosts look a little more like Cadians, don't they? They they're similar to Cadian gear. The difference is it's lighter. Gon's uh, ghosts are yeah. a light regiment as yeah. opposed if, to a line regiment. Gotcha. If and this the that is drawn from if the Catach- if the Catachans are the like Hollywood version of 
Vietnam war fighters, like with Sylvester Stallone and Rambo and all the various Arnold Schwarzenegger movies that existed, all that like big muscled, like last action hero style stuff. The Tanith first and only are like the more realistic grounded or war documentary footage that you see of uh, Vietnam, where it's like a bunch of young looking kind of skinny kids in just like I dress uniform viewed, stuff. I always viewed them as a combination of um, the Rogers Rangers, mm -hmm. which is an old, old, basically the original British special forces from back in like the colonial days. And it's, so the it's green coats, the green beret guys. Yeah, the green coats. Yeah, yeah, yeah they had good green coats. Yeah. yeah, they also had berets, but uh, so that would that was the origin of the green berets, I guess, too. In a way, yeah. They're, but, they're, um, it's just it's just but it's a combination their, their of that and sharp rifles. Like, yeah, they're, sharp they're rifles being another. It's a it's a story of uh, like a light infantry brigade. All right, let's move on because I want to get to my, but, my yeah, not my favorite, have, but my the one that I like. Their their best. Like they're they're two kind of defining looks wise. Besides being light yeah. armor, light you gotta, you gotta talk about the their Cadians. face thing. They they use blue face paint, well blue body paint, like Braveheart type shit. Yeah, exactly yeah. like Woad. Braveheart shit. Woad war paint. Oh, okay, that's their cultural thing. That's kind of the cool. Planet. They also have camo cloaks. Sick. So you know what the Space Marine Scouts wear to like right. all every single one of these guys has one. Huh. So imagine like a whole regiment of dudes hiding in the grass. Yeah. And then just like. Do you know what that woad paint does? You're talking about the blue paint? It fucks mm -hmm. you up. <laughs> yeah. It's a hallucinogen. No. Yeah. Wrong. Isn't it? Oh, I thought yeah. it had hallucinogen. It's products. a clotting agent. Oh. oh. So if you I thought cut, it was hallucinogen. To death. Nope. Nope. It's a clotting agent. But instead of it being yeah. paint. Are we talking about guys? 40K or are we talking about Braveheart? In Both. Braveheart. Yeah, I mean, well, in yeah, this, like... it's not even paint. It's a tattoo. Oh, okay. These yeah. guys are actually, it's tattooed on them. They probably paint it when they go into battle just to look badass, but yeah. I would. <laughs> but it's tattooed on these guys. They also have a bunch of big old manly beards and stuff, yeah. and uh, it causes a bunch of problems because a bunch of the other regiments are like, look at these scruffy, very <laughs> they, 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 they're not. They're not dressed. They're not dressed properly. Yeah, they're, they're artwork. Their new artwork looks very much like the the stereotypical like young Vietnam soldier in like a, like a and that's the thing is most in of Kong them are supposed to in be Kong young. Island uh, Kong Skull Island all the, oh all the yeah all the soldiers this, this is still Gon's ghost totally, ghosts, totally right? what yeah. they look like yeah yeah we we can move on yeah. this, yeah. Is, <laughs> if this is still Gon's ghost we so can fucking Italian, move on this so is still the, too much already. I want to bring up the Italian Attilian Rough Riders really quick. Uh, they're they I thought they were dope. Uh, Rough Riders ended up being worked a lot more into Krieg, the lore Krieg. and then gameplay later on. But the Attilan Rough Riders were the original. They were recruited from a feudal world that doesn't even have like modern Gunpowder. tech. <laughs> and they're they're horse lords. They're one hundred percent Attilan, Attila the Hun. It one hundred percent. It was a planet of Mongolians. Yeah. It's a they're Mongolian horse riding people they were the ones who originally had the exploding tipped spear thing that is now part of krieg it's not that they're gone the planet still exists and they still exist in lore but they've they've taken a back seat because um there's some stuff that was just directly stolen from like we've stolen an entire culture and made it into a planet that was happening mm -hmm. that games workshop kind of works away from but i've always i always liked the attilan rough riders they're, they looked really cool the old models they, for them looked really sick Oh yeah, and they look exactly like Mongolian <laughs> horse do. lords, but they with do. like modern weapons, which I always thought was dope. Mm -hmm. Can I can I talk about the one that I like? You can bring up their talk. name and then make me do, uh, and then make me only if you can say their stuff. real name. The Miasmin Red Cows. There you go. They All are right. my. They are not. I don't want to say they're my favorite because I really like Steel Legion, but the Miasmin Red Cows. They're. It's not like a penal colony, but they have basically like like a little satellite ring around their planet because it's a gas giant. And they yeah. invented or they created like a more volatile or a better version of Prometheum. They specialize in uh, flamers and th their flames are actually green. Yeah. But the issue, the issue is that they're stinky. They, stinky they, they are stinky, stinky boys. boys. The, that Prometheum that they created that's more volatile is smelly and it's actually funny because other regiments of guard actually don't want to be stationed near them because they're that smelly so they look kind of look like admech rangers they have like they the, do yeah they have like yeah, the really big do. red yeah they got the big red coat red they have like the armor. cadian armor yeah the cadian but it's black 
Uh, they have like these little face masks, like the gas mask, like from rattle cans, like respirator. It's like a gas mask. Yeah, respirator. Thank you. Did I say that right? Respirator. 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 Hazard, I said, hazardous I said it wrong. Environment <laughs> two respirator. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they uh, they're they're pretty cool. I like them. Oh, so they call them rebreathers. Their rebreathers look like respirators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they do look a, pretty dope. Yeah, and I guess they're often placed on the front line. They're not really used as a defensive regiment like a lot of guard are because of their flamers. There's no reason to have, like, a def- I guess. Flames aren't a defensive. <laughs> yeah. Because they stink and they want them to die. <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. Nobody I wants really don't their like city. that guy over there, and I would like to light him on fire. <laughs> yeah, but There's, I thought it was dope. They're, like, red. They're fucking. They do they look, look like. And Rangers cool. look sick. Oh, yeah. With, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. green flames. Like, that's fucking cool. That'd be dope. It reminds me of my that's orcs, actually. <laughs> Dude, have, you, have you seen the the miasmin like Ogren? No. It looks dope. Somebody, oh, somebody get back. It's just like the paint scheme. Oh, yeah. It's very much like the Krieg one. Your favorite's the Praetorian Guard, right? That's Tom's favorite. Yeah. Tom's yeah. favorite. Is that like basically they get their, what did you say, influence? Like how, how they their dress? Their aesthetic. Their aesthetic. Yeah, their aesthetic. Is, yeah. Uh, is old like British Empire, you know. Boer War. Boer War expansion. Zulu you know, Wars. like basically the sun never sets on the British Empire. Like they're the red coats with the, the safari helmets and the big like flintlock rifles. Like uh, what's his name? Van Pelt, right? Van yeah. Pelt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight up From Van Jumanji. Pelt. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm going to hunt human. Like, <laughs> you know. Except they hunt orcs. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Quartermain, Alan Quartermain, when he's like in that Hatch like Matilda. yeah, he's like in that hut. And he's like, oh yes, back in my day, we we shot many elephants in our time with my double barrel flint lock. Like it's totally <laughs> that, and I just love it. So like like Tom said, they wear the safari helmets, red coats, looks exactly like British. They use, as he said, like flint locks, but instead of flint locks, they use las locks, oh. yeah, which are a slightly inferior version of a las rifle. Mm. Or a las gun. It looks like a Lucius pattern, but it it's looks a one like shot. the Krieg one. But yeah, mm. it's single shot, and then they've got to load it again. Oh, that's gnarly. Yeah, it, because it's literally their whole regiment is pulled from that. But because their technology isn't advancing, right? That's good enough for what they're fighting. Because orcs kind of like meet the need with their level of technology, right? And because the Imperium won't, l- or the the Praetorians won't let the orc presence get above a certain amount of orcs to generate enough kind of wog energy or whatever they would need to get more advanced. The orcs they're fighting are fighting with primitive weapons as well. Nice. <laughs> so they're not shooting at them with sluggas and dacas and all that stuff. They're shooting bows and arrows. Huh. It's so bows and arrows and spears and that stuff. Yeah. Chariots and things versus guardsmen with muskets and bayonets and that's yeah, dope. it's very much a copy from the Zulu War. It's it's they just wanted to have a Zulu War reference, so yeah. they made they took fantasy orcs, yeah, and, and the Zu- the, guardsmen, the Zulu, and were like, "Cool." The Zulu War was like ten years before World War One ish. No, 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 way before that. Rogues Drift? Is that what we're talking about? Rogues Drift? The the Zulu War, Boer, the Boer War is all that. The Boer that War. Whole time the Boer period. War is not the Zulu War. Oh. I forgot to I forgot to mention. Wasn't about it like the, one one right before the other? No. The Miasmin oh. Redcoats, they're also called the Fire Skunks. I forgot to mention that. Fire Skunk, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. All right, what do you what do you know about the Savlar Chem Dogs? I honestly don't know too much about them. Actually, one of my friends really likes them. And if I so remember right, don't they use acid weapons? Isn't that their their thing? I think so. So it, so they're scavengers and criminals from a scum world. They live underground. Savlar, right? yeah. And they're dregs of humanity that were recruited to serve on Armageddon. So they actually go to this other planet and then drag these guys to Armageddon. Motivated by the loot they might be able to recover, they excel in cramped, noxious battles of underhives or inside of hives. Much of their equipment is stolen from other regiments. That's awesome. And much of their courage <laughs> comes from the use of nitrochemical inhalers, without which they would likely That's flee terror is. from the demons their thing. Yeah, that now haunt the ash wastes of their underhives. Yep. Yeah, it's funny. They're, they actually um, kind of look like gangers. Yeah, <laughs> they do look like that. gangers. Yeah, they they huff combat oh. drugs and fuck shit up. Yeah, yep. yeah they have like uh, or at least the, the picture that I'm looking at, they have like respirator, mm-hmm. kind of like 
what do you call it? It's got those tubes that come out of the side of it. Yeah, yeah like, like scuba go to gear. like a re- yeah, like scuba gear. A rebreather. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, like a painted face with like a trench coat, like a brown trench coat, boots. Yeah, and, and of... it definitely they definitely look like like scavenged armor, or scavenged weapons. Right. Yeah. That, they'll, they'll, like a they, Mad it's Max. A, it's a dope. Very Mad Max. Yeah. yeah. So the Terax Guard, Terax is the site of the most major Scola Progenium facility. The Scola Exabudos. The Scola Progenia trained many of the Imperial agents of war, notably stormtroopers and commissars, and their methods are rigorous and incredibly effective. The tithed regiments raised on Terex have been trained under the auspice of the Scola Progenia and are truly modeled in image almost exclusively as a regiment of commissars. So the Terex Guard don't really exist anymore. They have been replaced... With the Tempesta Scion. That makes uh, sense. I was yeah. going to say, this sounds basically like Stormtroopers. Yeah. Just, I mean, like, like at the end of that title. At the end of the day, the Terex Guard probably still exists because the planet of Terex still exists, but you would just you would run them as Tempesta as Scions. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of curious if uh, the Terex Pattern Assault Drill comes from their planet. No, that's a Termix <laughs> Pattern Assault Drill. What is oh, it? yeah, Termix. Termix. Yeah. This is no, Terax. There's a, a Terax one, is I it? believe. There yeah, is? I thought it was Termix oh, wow. or Terminix or something. It, it's no, Termix because it's supposed to be Termite. It's it's named after a Termite. Oh, that makes sense. So the Harkoni Warhawks. These are fun. Harkoni Harkonnen. Warhawks. Yeah, it's a low gravity planet with a lot of like really ridiculously big hive worlds and lots oh. of spires that reach up That's into the, the upper way? atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. The Harkoni oh. Grav Gliders hunt. Vapor worms in the mountain passes below the hives. They're not Elysian drop troop drop troops, but they basically because of the way that they're planted, they wear is, the they same drop gear. on. Yeah, yeah. Their skills yeah. are put to good use by the Imperium and many war masters because of their courage into basically like jumping fearlessly high altitudes into combat. They're they're yeah. one of the original drop troop. Yeah, and they wear basically Cadian standard gear kind of thing. Yeah, and, like they they uh, look with they, the jetpack. <laughs> Yeah, they kind of look a little bit more like carcass, carcassons? Casserkins. Casserkins, thank you. Why do I keep thinking, ca- oh, because Cossark. Huh. Because you mispronounce everything. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Kanakin Skull Takers, the volcano-wracked world of Kanakin, is home to many fierce barbarian tribes, some of which are closer to Ogrins than humans. Their talent for slaughter soon found a home in the Imperial Guard, where considerable tolerance for their feral tactics is allowed. Like many feral regiments, their service while in the Imperial Guard is in practice to teach them the ways of the Imperium they can take back to their people. But they look like people who were told they needed to wear pants that used to wear loincloths and they have a tendency to like decorate their bodies with like the skulls of the things that they kill they're notable for oh, fighting like with mortar like, factors pist- yeah for fighting with axes and pistols so they'll run in and like they're orcs like yeah, they're, they're human orcs basically <laughs> in a lot of ways they specialize in crumping in crumping mm-hmm. big piece of artwork that's easy to find the dude's holding like a giant battle axe He's got a bunch of grenades on his a belt across his chest. He's not wearing any clothes. He's not wearing a shirt. He's just ripped up with all of these like ritual scars, and then he has a bunch of orc skulls on his belt hanging off Badass. his belt. Dope. Yeah. Sounds like um, a mortifactor human. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the Athonian tunnel rats. I know that I mean, they're mentioned several times. They're essentially tunnel rats. I mean. The- it's it's they're, from the concept of in World War One. They're like, man, that dude's got a trench over there, and I can't shoot him if he's in his trench. But sound, you know what ruins his day is putting dynamite under his trench. Sounds like essentially like Gene Stealer called, but Guard Regiment that specializes Go, in the governor, similar. The governance kind of. of Athanos is in perpetual flux, with the leadership positions being constantly vied for by dozens of rival families. The resultant gang warfare fought in the streets and sewers of the Hydroponic Gardens is brutal and unending. Such is the recruitment ground for the Athonian Tunnel Rats. By the time they are drafted for the Imperium Tithe, they are already masters of urban combat and among the most determined close-quarter fighters in the Imperial Guard. Sick. That's crazy. They look like they Next. fight with they look like they fight with lots of flaming flamer crap too. And they're oh, crazy probably. looking. They're they're dressed in like a mixture of like battle armor, like heavy plate armor and <laughs> and 
and that thing that happens in Warhammer art where they're just wearing scrolls with a bunch of words written all over it. They look pretty chaos yeah. actually. I'm surprised that they're a Imperial Guard regiment. Mm. Do you know anything about the Ventrillian nobles? They're another one that I, I know in name. They but look really cool. He's like, that's what I do. Yeah, what do they look like? Let's that's, do that. That's that's the one that I showed you guys a while back with the dude had the big feather coming out the top of his head. Oh, oh, and he had yeah. the like super okay. old school backpack and like yeah. the white pants with like the knee high black boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys are cool. They they look very much Char Ansible from Gundam. Gotcha. The guy that piloted Tall Geese? Yeah. Yeah. You know how he's he's got that like button up, mm -hmm. you know, very nobility. Yep. Looks like he's out for a ride on his noble racehorse. Yeah, he's got nonsense. like the white kind of it's safari helmet that. with the feathers. It's all about that MPI yeah. custom. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was. Toggies was a badass. Toggies is a badass. Look at those gun they, fucking nerds. Yeah. <laughs> they appear, Giant killer I robots. No, I literally mm -hmm. have no fucking clue what you guys are talking about. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so they apparently come from a very wealthy planet. That sounds like it's kind of a paradise, but it looks like a bunch of them um, live underground, and then they the rest of no the guy are like must be nice. <laughs> they, <laughs> right? they have it's like, to, man, your world doesn't suck. That's that's rare. <laughs> they have to go underground to survive something called the trial by lava lakes. Mm -hmm. I don't it's know. Like I'd, I'd like to look more into them, but they do. They do look interesting. Oh right, look, this is this is the one where like they're su they're all super rich because yeah. there's certain minerals that are only found in these lava lakes. But when they yeah. go down there, they, like, get these minerals. And I think they use them to enhance their armors and stuff. Yeah. They don't pay the Imperial Tithe. It specifically says they donate. <laughs> yeah, they donate. They have so much money that they don't need it. <laughs> They're so rich. It, it sounds like they work with rogue traders a lot. So Yeah. Oh, in fact, in fact, the rogue trader guys, that it, I, it's they're wearing their armor. Your rogue trader guys are wearing their armor, it looks like. Yeah, Based very on similar. some of the... The Indigen, 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 Indigen. Thank you. Prefix on the former menagerie world of Indiga. That makes sense. The prefix have the unenviable task of protecting the planet's natives from the megafauna that prowl the verdant realm. Giant predators that had once been the pride and joy of a pompous governor, Constantine Principa Argoy, who spent the planet's copious mineral wealth on the purchase of breeding pairs of every dangerous creature he could acquire from across the segmentum. <laughs> That's what's up. What a dick! What Unfortunately, a <laughs> after a catastrophic earthquake shattered the governor's zoo, the giant animals escaped into the wilds and bred a lot. Is it, okay, and bred and hybridized. Is this? This is the Jurassic This is, Jurassic this Park? is the Jurassic <laughs> Park fucking yeah. garden. I was like, I was like, this sounds familiar. <laughs> Spared <laughs> no expense. <laughs> Life so it finds a way. Finds a way. <laughs> so they look. That uh, is a really big pile of shit. <laughs> they look interesting. They also kind of are in heavy armor. Mm -hmm. They look like pleated skirt. Ones. What are yeah. they called? Indigen, uh, indigen prefect. Indigen prefect. Uh, they're wearing um, like boilerplate plate armor, and then they've got like war skirt, like a like a gambeson with some armor on them. Even their boots are armored. They look a lot like a modern take on half plate knights. And the dude's carrying a shotgun, which is pretty badass, considering that their their entire job apparently is to slay large dangerous and beasts. dangerous beasts. <laughs> and they've got a reputation Dinosaur for being really DNA. good at it. That's very they're, much what Solar Auxilia look like as well. Oh yeah, and they're they, it sounds like they're tossed into fights with Tyranids a lot. So yeah, they, big, they also big look bugs, like big nasty things. Same thing. Yeah. So the next are the Mordant Acid Dogs, and I actually I have an old quote about them too that I thought was pretty dope. So give me a second. I always mix up it. them and the Chem Dogs. Yeah, that's why I was like, these are the guys with the acid weapons, right? Mm. So the Morton Seventh Headhunters. It's a common practice amongst the savage hive gangers of Morton to take body parts as trophies from defeated enemies. Colonel Raj of the Morton Seventh encourages his men to continue this custom, earning them a vicious reputation. This came to a head during the infamous sacking of Colonia, during which it is said that the headhunters went on a three-month rampage pillaging and plundering the imperial settlement of Colonia after defeating the <laughs> orcish hordes of warlord Grag Badtooth. It was later claimed that the orcs had been responsible for much of the devastation, but there are those who still blame the headhunters. They got like a necklace of dicks. Yeah, they're... They've got. They do use acid weapon. They've got a. They've got a crazy long acid etched blade or acid blade that they use. That's dope. Um, to cut off the wieners of their enemies. 
They're crazy looking. Their art style looks a lot like the Marines from Aliens, just blue instead of green. Mm -hmm. But like down to the the exposed bulging arms. Oh, yeah. The Fayburn Vanquishers, they hail from the honeycombed cave world of Fayburn. Since the opening of the Great Rift, a strange phenomenon has filled Fayburn skies with hallucinogenic patterns known as the Aurora Illuminato. It forms shapes and faces, which the Fayburn devotees see as signs sent by the Emperor. However, they bring nightmares as often as they bring solace. They look like... Mm -hmm. Slightly more elven or slightly more avian versions of Cadians, basically. I kind of want to know more, but I kind of feel like there isn't more to know if that... I don't think there is any more with that. I think that's as far as they got. And then the Truscan Snowhounds, the tribes from which the Snowhounds... The Trusca? Trus... Yeah, Trusca. If I remember right, this is like a very feral... Truscan. Why would you say Trusca? It ends with an N. Truscan. Yeah. I was talking about the planet. But it's very, oh, these guys, oh. <laughs> I guess yeah. you. they hail from the planet Trusca. <laughs> that makes sense. Like it just Christmas. says that they're, they're recruited from winter worlds. And aside from being yeah. an extremely hardy regiment, the Truscans are renowned for their keen vision. Snipers and sharpshooters are common amongst the regiment. And they look like Cadians, but with a white armor. Sick. Fresh uh, grenadiers. And they, they also look like Cadians not wearing shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Grenadier regiments hail from the war-torn tech slums of Resh. A strong and violent gang culture pervades this shifting worldscape of rust and metal, and its warriors quickly learn the cunning in combat to follow orders of their leader. The flak armor they wear is typically fashioned from metal scrap plates, which are beaten into shape to wear during running slum battles. Once drafted into the Astra Militarum, the same armor is given regimental markings, through many of the lurid gang emblems of their former lives re are retained on their armors and breastplates. So I think it's pretty cool. At least two of them, the Mordant Acid Dogs Mordant and the Vresh. Acid Dogs and the Vresh Grenadiers are basically just gangers. As an yeah, army. they're hive gangers. That's dope. Yeah. That's cool. Is, man, as long as you fight and die for the Emperor, it doesn't really matter what you call them. Yeah. Same <laughs> yeah. with like Penal Legions, right? Yeah, Penal Legions. Yeah. It's There's essentially Colonel... a Penal Legion with less steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. There's Colonel Schaefer's Last Standards. Standards. Chancers. Chancers, thank you. Which is a penal legion. Uh, maybe we can c combo that with, like, the heroes. Com combo that with, like, all the... Oh, that, all that's good. The... Cool. They're cool. Um, but they're, they're, they're an example of a penal legion. I don't remember a heck of a lot about them. I think it, it, they're <laughs> definitely... They a bunch of short stories, if I remember right. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do building your own Imperial Guard unit or imperial guard army imperial guard lore there's also the lost and the damned which are the traitor guard units with the blood pact and the valsani cataphractors cataphracts mm -hmm. being two examples blood you will... pact is such a scary concept oh yeah it, like when you read about them in the books gaunt's ghosts you're like oh yeah they're, they're, they're good like these are normal humans and then they're like talking about the blood pact and they're like we could smell them before we could see them yeah, mm. yeah. They, it's like they smell of dried blood, stale urine, and weeks old sweat. And, and I think we'll get, definitely and they ritually scar themselves and keep all like the blood from it in their uniforms. That's gnarly. Yeah, it's fucking. Got to build up that patina. <laughs> yeah, it's nasty, and they wear like you know the Janissaries have like the the metal mask over their face in three hundred. Mm. They wear like that over their face. Yeah. But then all the rest of their armor is basically just painted and all the clothing is dyed there's, with dried blood. You know, there's, a, there's a whole regiment that wears those masks. Yeah, the, that's the Janissary ja Regiment. The uh, Maccabian Janissaries. Yeah, Maccabian yeah. Janissaries, yeah. which is a dope regiment. And unfortunately, and there, there really isn't very much lore on them. They just look really cool. And they have like three pictures. In the old codexes, we'll try to post up some pictures this week on social media. But oh, yeah, that'd in be the good. in the old dump. codexes, there's these like pages where they just list off like thou like not thousands, hundreds different of different guard and regiments, a uniform, yeah, yeah, and it's just one, and there'll be like one line, like they hail from the planet of Rodcastia or whatever. Balsakia. That's it, and that's it. Balsakia. That's all there is. It'll be the frozen world, or the desert world, or the right. jungle world, or the paradise world, the sagging sack world. Yeah, and that's it. That's all. That's all you get. And you're like, oh, that's cool. 
All right. So, yeah, to wrap up part six, we're going to talk a little bit about the auxilia troops that are used by the Imperial Guard, as well as abhumans and primaris psychers. So the Imperial Guard obviously pull from all sorts of different planets, and they pull from all different parts of the Imperium in general. So you're going to get variations on, like, genetic stock humans. Some of the regiments that we talked about earlier, we didn't get super deep into it. But, for instance, like the Death Corps of Krieg, they're vat-grown people. They're not born people. Um, oh, there's a couple of... <laughs> yeah, they're test tube babies. Cadians all have purple eyes. I remember when that yeah. used to be like a... Like a, a weird thing? No, no, no. It used to be like a... Uh, Urban legend. No, no, no. An no. insult. An insult. Yeah, no, like on Xbox test Live. Tube baby. Yeah, on Xbox Live, like, shut up, you fucking test tube baby. And be like, what? <laughs> well, it, and it's such a dub thing because it's basically, it's a, insulting your parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or if well, anything, that's, it's, that's... It's, a, it's a bonus because it means that you're lab created, which right? means you're better than everybody else. Suck it, normies. <laughs> what does it mean to be a vegan? It just means you're better what than does everyone it mean else. To be a vegan. <laughs> okay, um, Greg. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> if you're listening, I ate, a, ate a plain ass salad the other day. Yeah. The catachans. Catachans live on a planet that has heavier atmosphere, or heavier atmosphere, heavier gravity, so they're all a little bit stockier, like Ogrens. And then buffer. there's. Yeah. Uh, another planet where I can't remember, but there's a guard regiment where like they can't go out into the sun. They have to wear special stuff all the time because oh yeah, their they, planet they never exposed the UV light. Yeah. So UV light like burns void. them. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name of the regiment, yeah. but yeah, so I, the, I do remember reading something about them at one point. The guard uses everything. To, let's run through auxilia troops that so, they use. People are always like, oh, it, it's supposed to be like medieval feudal empire structures. They actually borrow a lot from Rome mm -hmm. for, for yeah. 40K. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, it's it's also they borrow from the Holy Roman Empire, which is the extent of what's left over after Rome. Yeah. But essentially, oh, a lot. <laughs> they, uh, and I mean, all these Latin names are a pretty dead giveaway. The auxilia is kind of a throwback to like militia troops that the Romans would have. Yeah, the auxilia right. weren't regulars because back in the day, you had regular soldiers and you had basically conscripts, which the yep. Imperial Guard still does. So, like in three hundred, when the whole Leonidas. What is your there. profession? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's I mean, regular. I am troops, a potter. <laughs> regular troops back then were hired by a blacksmith, like uh, uh, in most a, countries, a legatus. Way, yeah, you right. know, like a legatus. Basically, like imagine a general yeah. that owns his own army. That's how the Roman army worked. Uh, like legions, which is why Julius Caesar was such a big problem. Yeah, like because legions. Because he had a really big legion. Yeah, legions were owned by one person. Gotcha. You know, and, and then they paid their people, they paid their legionaries to be soldiers. Hmm. Well, if you weren't a professional soldier, what were you? An auxiliary. Potter. You know? Yeah, you were an auxiliary. You farmed, and then when it was time to go to war, the soldiers would be like, hey, we need somebody to just stand in the back and throw spears. Right. And then that's yeah. what you did. You live you, on our you, lands, you're going to do this. Like, and then, we're the professionals. Would, that's their job. Their job was to stand in the back and throw spears. Their job was to stand off to the side and throw spears into somebody's side. Their job mm. was to stand off to that side and get trampled by horses so the regular soldiers don't get trampled I'm by just horses. just a potter. And in, but, and in the and case the, of the Imperial Guard... The auxiliary troops' job <laughs> is to stand in front and die first to provide a little bit of a meat shield. Yeah, and then going even one step further, that because that's basically the conscript's job. Right. They took the, yeah. the job of the traditional auxilia has been transitioned to conscript because that, yeah. that's kind of the evolution of military terminology. Gotcha. And they took the term for auxilia, which is things that aren't normal soldiers that can still fight kind of concept, and applied it to things that aren't normal humans but can still fight. Uh, yeah. So they then took it as anything that isn't part of the normal traditional army structure, mm -hmm. soldier, tank, machine gun, plane, you know, APC, all that stuff. You've got that dude's really big and hits things really hard. So, so you've any, got your ogrins, and right. then you've got the opposite. You've got so, that dude's really tiny, yeah, like, yeah. but has oh. really sharp eyes and ears and can aim really yeah. well. So ogrins are ogrins, right? Ogrins yep. are ogrins. But there's some ogrins from planets that kind of like Akkadian ogrin is going to have purple eyes. Or no, ogrins are ogrins, and they're sent to different armies. There's, so like an ogrin from K that's fighting with Kadian. There's ogrins, there's bulgrins. No, 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 I know that. My, my point is, like, it's, you're not going to have a fire skunk ogren that is smelly or some shit like they're that. They're not, not treated gonna... like that. 
So yeah. they're so ogrens are very get, much they're a sub yeah. they're a subspecies of human. So, so they, before we yeah before we dive into to how they function in the imperial guard, it, they it, also function gotta, in greater imperial society. Yeah, we well. got to look at how they they look in greater imperial society. Yeah, we got to look at how they they're a certain set of strains that the Imperium considers abhuman. And as long as you fall within a certain level of variation from the human normal genome, you're either considered human or you're considered abhuman. As soon as you stray too far out of abhuman, you become what? Mutant. Yeah, mutant. Or <laughs> and, and then the worst examples are like beast Abomination. And at one point in the Imperium's past, beast men were actually part of the abhuman troops and were part of the Exilia and were part of so, the Imperial Guard. However, after the, I think, seventh, eight, it was either the seventh or eighth Black Crusade when a bunch of beast men fought on the side of Abaddon, beast men were purged. declassified as abhumans and are now purged as mutants. So they ruined but, it for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. To my point, or the question that I'm asking, okay, an, an ogren that is born on Cadia is a Cadian an ogren. ogren. An still ogren, an ogren. An ogren probably wouldn't be born on Cadia because Cadia is a planet that births standard enough humans. Gotcha. So, so ogrens are born so, all over the Imperium, and they're like, "Hey, you're an ogren. Go fight with Cadia or in the yes. Cadian army." I've, yeah, yes. I'm. I'm kind of so, more under the impression that because they use ogrens slash bulgrens in like a lot of factory work because mm-hmm. they're big, dumb, and strong. It makes sense if you use them for what they're good for. Right. Then it, at the point of tithing, they would be like, okay, we've got 700,000 Bulgrins. Let's take 100,000 of them and put that into our Imperial Guard tithe. Mm-hmm. And that would yeah. then be formed into an auxilia unit right. that Which follows that guard to, yeah. to wherever. Gotcha. So, so there just isn't like a Cadian Kadish... Bulgrin. Right. right. Gotcha. So just, Which is just why like on the... tabletop, they don't get doctrines, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. So just like the Catachans come from a planet with heavier gravity, so they've developed as like bigger, stronger, beefier. beefier people, they're still close enough to normal humans that they don't consider them Ogren. But because theirs is more an environmentally induced evolution as opposed to a full genetic mutation, mutation, mm-hmm. right. right? And uh, with squats, with ogrins, and with ratlings, which are the three primary abhumans that exist, but we'll talk about a lot. Their branch of humanity has all lived on a certain type of planet for so long that they've developed a very specific way, and that they've mutated far enough from the the standard human genome. So uh, that squats, like, you can read that in the genetic code that it's different, but still it's human. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But there's, so like, there's a they... good enough chunk that has changed. Mon- Monkai. Yeah. It, mon- uh, it went from yeah. Monkai to Monkesa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like we, and we've talked about this in some of our Loris Obscurus episodes, and we'll, we'll continue to talk about it because we're covering big feats right now. There's Homo sapiens, and then there's... Homo erectus. You know, yeah. And then in this case, there would be... Homos agrinus and homos squaticus and homos ra- radicanus. Radicus, like, yeah. Obviously, there would be, there's probably a different name because agrin, squat, and rattling are all kind of derogatory terms used by the Imperium for these things. Mm-hmm. But in general, agrin is implying that they're ogres. But well, in general, it would be like squat, the politically correct way to address them. However, their culture says their own name. Like the squats mm. theoretically are the demure. They are subhumans. They're lucky to even get a name. <laughs> I <Touché>. am subhuman <laughs> trash. What do they need a name for? Not like they're going to be able to read it. <laughs> so, so essentially, squats come from planets. No, the Imperium with... is very racist towards them and treats them yeah. as second oh, yeah. class. That's definitely that, a thing. Mm, they're just above the level of mutant. They're just above the level of kill on sight. But yeah, just to outline them really quick, and then we can talk about how they work in the army. Squats come from heavy gravity planets, planets that are closer to stars, stuff like that. And just over generations of genetic drift, they develop as shorter, stockier people. They are space dwarves for all intent and purpose. Ogrins developed on similar worlds, except generally speaking, instead of making them like squat and hardier, the high gravity and adverse condition worlds they grow on makes them just kind of bigger and meatier. So a lot of theory, times, move on, Ryan. 
uh, can we touch on what they specialize in before we move on to like how they look? So like uh, you said, a squat, right? Yeah. So what would so a squat, squat specialize in that makes them a good part to be tied into an auxilia? Well, squats so aren't super squats, auxilia right now. Squats, remember they got lore wise, history wise, squats are in a bad place because the majority of their planets were destroyed by Tyranids and only a few of them may still exist, but we're not sure. There there might be more out there. When they did function as part of the Imperial War Machine, they were known for their bike gangs. They were bikers <laughs> that rode along with the Imperial Guard. And they were very much known for their like large mechanized like monstrosities. So they they were dwarves. Space dwarves uh, arti- is the best way to look at them. Artificers. Artificers. Huh. Yeah. Almost sapiens rotundus is what their technical name is for squats. They would have like land trains. We talked about land trains in the past. Mm-hmm. Lots of bikes, lots of trikes. They're very much known for That's that. That's pretty the cool, actually. Heavy heavy armor, power armor, like little tiny walking tanks. They have there a, was a they period used to have of time a time where they fought space marines and they yep. fucked space marines up. Uh yeah, Lehman Russ Primark actually like gave them. They were like, huh, "You guys are all right." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, they, cuz they, they they would go into the dwarven cave or the squats like mountain caves and space marines are like, "I'm a badass space marine." And then like four squats would pop out of the fit. wall and no. fuck his <laughs> shit up. <laughs> The squats While he's also, trying to like fit through a doorway for would pop out with meltas and just be like, blam, got him. <laughs> and then and then they went, This armor's pretty cool. How do we make it for ourselves? And they basically made Space Marine power armor that was like walk, w- little tiny walking artillery units. So instead of having they, a three man artillery piece, you have a squat in a suit. They look That's a lot so like uh, Killicans. That is super yeah. dope. Like imagine yeah. like a more like a dwarven I mean, Killican. Not to be not to be redundant but a squattier <laughs> kill a can. Squattier, kill a can. I know right I'm like I don't know how else to explain this but as, with as the, far with as yeah as far as we know they were eaten by tyranids however their, there is their home worlds were eaten by tyranids yeah is that because yeah. they were like mainly fringe planets they were pretty far off to one side mm-hmm. and then I mean you know how GW is they yeah. just like to, to, to take things away from us right, right. No, so they they, they, they just they just us. put them on they put them on like hiatus. They didn't really get rid of them. They just kind of like yeah, moved them to a back. They, bas- they show, hinted show at them. the Tyranids ate their home world and that there was some refugees, and then they basically haven't said anything since, mm-hmm. except but, that one tidbit of the Demurg or whatever that. Right. Talks oh no 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 no! Is there no, more? No no. That's yeah, the only go, one that I know look, of. Is is that go Demurg? Look at, go look. Oh, and Trazen's got some, doesn't he? Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, Necromunda. There are several squat characters in the Necromunda line right now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're still around. They're just like super. But yeah, um, I think that's the thing that we're going to find out as the lore continues to develop is whether or not the Demurg is its own race or if it is squats. I think it's squats. I mean, if you look at the ship, it's it's very squatty. I'm guessing it's it's squats squats. that got folded into the towel. Mm. And then that'll that'll be interesting because then there will probably still be like you said since well, they're in Necromon uh, Imperial squats. Well, well, and they're called yeah. de, they're called the Demurg Brotherhood. So that makes me oh, believe hey, that there was go, a yeah. squat named Demurg, which is a very squat like name, right? Who then was like, "You're joining my brotherhood," you know? So it's they're just, called the Demurg Brotherhood, like. Right. I it's like just some of the artwork on the Demurg doesn't look very dwarfy. It looks more like squat alieny. Well, it's weird. I mean, who who are they teamed up with? The yeah, exactly. That's yeah, true. Who that's are true. aliens? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. The Ogren are the next guys, and again, similar planets, uh, high high gravity planets, usually closer to suns. Very very pressure cooker situations. Except in the Ogren's cases, they don't just make them shorter. They make them just kind of bigger in general. I always and in general, the, uh, they're dumber. Uh, yeah. The technical name is Homo sapiens giganticus. And I always yeah, viewed their go. kind of evolutionary pathway as more of a, instead of like, oh man, this world is just hard to survive on, so my body has changed. Their worlds were actually more like predatory based. It's not just harder to survive on by the nature of the gravity and stuff, but by combat. Mm-hmm. Which is they, which would like so they evolved less intelligent because that that wasn't important. Crumpin was important, right? So yeah, the they, knowledge they hail... and physical abilities to crump is what was most important. Survival key and and yeah. being able to build stuff. Complex thought not important when you have to beat giant lizards to death every day, right? 
Yeah, they Darwin, hail from Darwinism. a series exactly. of cold and incredibly barren pr- planets that are scattered across the galaxy that possess higher gravities, which is why they appear larger, heavier, and bulkier when compared to baseline humans. They compensate for their metal deficiencies with their overwhelming physicality. They are close to 10 feet tall, which is just insane, man. I didn't realize they were that tall. That's how tall the emperor is. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the emperor is 10 foot. Well, 10 foot something, some change. I mean, it depends on uh, what day you're talking to him. Well, it depends on who, yes. I know the average. (laughs) The uh, the traditional vision uh, of the emperor. Yeah, veteran space marines or whatever they call that. The... OG space marines are first seven marines. Fo- yeah firstborn marines are seven foot primaris are about eight uh thunder warriors were about nine without armor yeah custodes were about nine and the emperor is about 10 or 11 is like the thing yeah i just i just le- like relearned that the other day yeah. that's why it's fresh in my brain but yeah so that was bulgrins and ogrins are basically the same thing well yeah what is the difference because i know that i've heard that a lot and i knew it at one point but i forgot Really, I haven't found a difference. Like there is, there is. Dev- I know that yeah, there, like there's there was a, talked so about there's being a, a difference. So there's a bunch of different types. There's boneheads. There's bulwarks. There's gun luggers. And that's um, more just based off what they like do rank. and rank. Yeah. I know so that bul- boneheads actually have a surgery done to them. Yep, to make them smarter. <laughs> that's why they're the squad leader because mm. they were actually given more intelligence, given more brain. <laughs> So, Bulgrins are clad in custom-made carapace armor made out of discarded tank tracks and carry crude assault weaponry intended to capitalize on the abhuman stature and resilience. So, it's just okay. a type. It's so, a, bo- a Bulgrin is like an it's armored ogre. a melee ogre. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. I think Grin would kind of be the, the you know, the, the set of, yeah. of yeah. them is their Grins. And then you got Ogrins, Bulgrins. Okay. That yeah, they're sense. all. And then normal Ogrins at least traditionally, are are the ones that carry the DACA guns. Yeah. They're and they're, guns they're like sick. Ripper guns. Ripper now, guns. did you know, did you know, out of all of the auxilia, and I say this because they're used in auxiliary, the Bogrins, or Ogrins, are actually very, very rampant in Tau armies. Yeah. Oh, really? Which, yeah. There's a, even, like, there literally is in a book, I forget what it is, but it was, like, an official GW book that stated, like, they're... Because somebody even made rules for them as an auxiliary unit, which I'm like, dude, do they need? But basically, they are... Uh, they're happier in the Tau Empire because the Tau Empire is actually nice to them. They give them yeah. three crowns. Yeah, they give two. them stuff. Yeah, yeah like, they're not looked well, down. That- no, they're not looked down upon. Like, and yeah. they're like, oh, these guys are really nice. Like, yeah. they're nice to me. You know, like that's like their whole like thing. And they're given burst cannons, the minigun things, mm-hmm. but they actually have to like remake them because the Ogrins will run out of energy for them and, and then, then use them as a club and they kept breaking them. So the tower, like we got to make beefier. So <laughs> that's why I figure out how to make this not fall apart. Yeah. It so that's why close. the burst cannons that are on stealth suits mm-hmm. look different is because those ones are that's derivatives the, from the up armored versions they made. The for I always ones. wondered that too. Yeah. They're like enclosed. They're enclosed. Right? Yeah. yeah. Cause, and that's basically the up armored ones that an Ogren carries. You know, what would be dope making a hazard suit Bulgren or Ogren because it's like a gnarly, it's a high output burst cannon. Right. Yeah. But like, it's they're also larger suits. It's a, is, it put an Ogren with a jet pack. Well, in like, no, no, like, yeah, yeah, make suits. a Bulgren, but like, Bolt a bunch of put a bunch of ca- uh, ca- uh, uh, crisis As, suit stuff on them. Yeah, yeah use yeah. Like the Well, armor. but that's the thing. I mean, the the ones that I have, the reason mm-hmm. why one of them has that up armored one is because I had it from a stealth suit. Right, right. Ideally, what I'd want is the, the one. one from the uh, Remora. Oh yeah, the yeah. Remora ones are super big and super like bulky. Yep. Nice. But yeah, I mean, anyway, be, I'm getting sidetracked. But yeah, the uh, the, the like the Bulgren like for the Tau are actually like. They love it. Like, they're yeah. like, this is great. Like, and they don't have, like, bullets or anything. It's all energy stuff. All done. Yeah, like, so they, they actually, uh, they, yeah. um, Farsight used them oh. in the main, like, battle where he earned his red armor. Like, oh, he yeah. actually had Bulgren there. That's dope. <laughs> and, that, yeah. and that's one of the reasons that, like, even the lore states that Bulgrins are stupid or Orgrins are stupid. There's a lot of that, like, well, is that because lore is written from the Imperial propagandist point of view? Because other races use them and treat them differently. So are they dumb? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty dumb. sure they're still dumb. They're just 
They're not they're not dumb and they're violent. they're classified yeah. like the Tao classified them as very simple minded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, and which yeah, basically it's like you you're I mentally mean, that's, handicapped. That's like, really what the Imperium classifies them as. But goes, oh, they're simple minded. Cool. That means they won't mind working in a factory. Yeah, <laughs> the Imperium is like, oh, you're like a two year old idiot, and the Tao are like, oh, you're like. A six-year-old. Friendly. Idiot. Yeah. You're a fair. child, but with a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> no climbing. <So> the, yeah. <laughs> no, no climbing. So the last group that is used often are ratlings. So they are from the home world of Orin's world. Uh, technical name is Homo sapiens minimus. Imagine that. You have Giganticus and minimus. Mm-hmm. And, and, <laughs> Uh, Rotundus. Like, well, Rotundus. 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 Yeah, that's, that's the Scotch. I love that one. So you have Biggest the dickus. You have the fat one, the large one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the it's, small it's one. the round. It's the round one, the tall one, <laughs> and, the, and the small one. one. <laughs> yeah. The abhuman trait le- led to ratlings is the fact that their ancestors came from worlds that had so much, like like such perfect climates and such great environments for being perfect for human life and just living life of abundance that they uh, that they somehow grew sh- short into hobbits, which I don't yep. understand. <laughs> they're they're basically their environment. I don't understand required. the justification for like, oh, their lives, they were on paradise worlds and they had very abundant harvests. So, so obviously six foot tall humans turn into hobbits that like to eat all day. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a it's, weird justification. But cool. sp- I mean, it's over thousands and thousands and thousands yeah. of years. Of no, uh, of it doesn't no, conflict. No conflict. No. Yeah, they so, have no natural predators. No natural predators. Yeah. No harsh weather. So like, you don't need fat like blubber to survive the winter or anything. Right. All you do is drink and eat your farm goods. Yeah. Yeah. And they just Make hung out lives. for thousands of years, and eventually they're like, man, we don't even need like your your the genetics essentially that would. I don't even think they'd be like farming because obviously farming is kind of rough life i think it's just it, gatherers they're just gatherers 100 percent. it is a very very thin justification and they have not been updated they haven't oh, had yeah. their lore expanded in a very long and time it was essentially like what they happened had to draw. Is, it's like tom said you know they were like well what what do the hobbits of the shire do oh they drink and eat all the time so obviously these are humans that eat and what about second break like, <laughs> nobody thought past that yeah basically. well and also you have to remember that all these things are drawn from some or almost everything in 40k is drawn from yeah, a reference from something in else. fantasy. Fantasy, yeah. yeah. Uh, or so from uh, another sci-fi. The one thing... Ratlings are, like you guys said, hobbits. They're 100 The hobbit hobbits. version in fantasy is there's a realm called the Moot, and it's a little hobbit kingdom, and that's literally all they do is just feast and yeah. drink. Because it's Moot. Nobody cares about it. Yeah, exactly. The one thing about ratlings that separates them from every other type of ab human is that they are actually accepted into the Normal realm of society. mankind. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. society. They're the only ones that aren't immediately like, you're gross, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, because they're uh, full imperial, just small people. Full imperial citizenship, they're called. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. People, people still it, don't like them, but they're, they, they're, they're the only ones granted that. Yeah, and they were granted that because of the work that they did for the Inquisition and the Astra Militarum. Because they make great snipers. I was going to say, they're yeah. essentially snipers, right? Oh, snipers, yeah. they, reconnaissance, they tricks, tricks, little fact, every, piece of shit. Well, okay. In fact, every time there's a joke about orc snipers somewhere, there's probably a good chance it was a rattling sniper. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're really, really good shots from in, extreme distances, and their they're like wider feet give them better balance, so they're good uh, reconnaissance troops, too. And they can scurry around because they're mm. tiny. Yeah, they're classified as having like good eyesight because they've been eating carrots for yeah, exa- years. yeah. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> that, and that's that's the funniest thing. Like, that's the thing about uh, the auxilia stuff is that you know, as Kevin said, it's all based on fantasy. So just think Lord of the Rings, and then think of a reference, and it comes from that. Like, so literally yeah. hobbits, literally ratlings. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's it's, what you get. It, it's yeah, it's that. It's hmm. We want a hobbit in 40k. What are they? It's a ratling. Yeah, hmm, we want a you know. An basically ogre. an ogre in 40k it's an ogre you and know like it, it, and that has a fantasy reference from fantasy warhammer as well there mm-hmm. are ogre mercenaries mm-hmm. that yep. is it that is a thing in fantasy and so the humans would have ogre mercenaries 
who are big, dumb, and strong and just hit things with sticks. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the whole point. I mean, it's the same thing. Wizards. <laughs> And yeah. the, uh, sanctioned yeah, psychers we're getting, we're getting are supposed to be battle. Yes, yeah, that was around. our next thing. Yeah. Sanctioned psychers, primary well, psychers. To to continue going with Marky's question, ratlings are used as forward reconnaissance troops and snipers by the Imperial Guard. Yeah, the next group is primary psychers or sanctioned space psychers. wizards. These aren't fielded in, in the same way that like auxilia uh, units are. These yeah, are more like a utility single and actually u- single single things. Yeah, and to, to interrupt you really quick, and this is where we're so we've defined abhumans and we've defined how abhumans are used as exilia troops. Now we're going to talk about psychers, which are not necessarily abhumans, and how psychers are used as auxilia troops. Right? I did that right. Yep. I transitioned yeah. that correctly. Yeah, <laughs> we're no longer talking about abhumans. <laughs> now we're talking about psyker. Yeah, space wizards. Space like wizards. That. <laughs> so psychers as we said psychic magic inspired users their link is straight to the battle mages of the empire imagine that battle Makes mages, sense. battle psychic nasty now these psychers are nowhere near as powerful as like xeno psychers or no, even Eldar space psychers, psychers, psychers or librarians and are they, magnitude stronger than most human psychers gotcha. and there's a reason for that so the it really 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 briefly Psychic potential became a mutation in humanity sometime during, like, our era in the Warhammer 40K. It wasn't very common, but it had started happening in, like, M2-ish. Think of of Starship Troopers. Ace of Spades. Think of Starship Troopers. Ace of Spades. So there are levels of psychers in the Imperium. And the Imperium, if you are too high on the scale, as we talk about the Scolia Progenia and we talk about psychers in general, we'll get a lot more into this. Your cases of being thrown into a black ship get higher and higher and higher. And if you are at like an Eldari level or at a librarian level, the Inquisition shows up and shoots you. They don't throw you in a black ship. They don't ask questions. They don't try to train you. They show up and shoot you. Just well, it also done. depends on when they discover the yeah, talent yeah. in relation to your age. If they get you, it's like Jedi. If they get you young enough, they will train The possibilities you. are endless. I, I yeah. thought it was like you kind of want to be somewhere in the middle because there's people who are psychers that don't even know that they're psychers, and the Imperium's like, oh, you're a psyker? Get in this black ship. Yeah, so yeah, the, the lowest if you level register of... at all as a psyker, they black ship your ass. Then they decide what level of psyker you are and what you're going right. to be good at. Mm-hmm. If you are but... trash level psyker, then you are chaff for the Astronomicon. Right. That's it. That black is your ship purpose. being you are one of the, what is it, 10,000 psychers or 1,000 psychers that sacrificed 10, 000, yeah. every day to keep the Emperor's light. Lit. That's the Astronomicon ones, the yeah. chaff ones. So they yeah. sacrifice a bunch of chaff garbage psychers just to power that thing. Gotcha. But the black ship, that's what that is for, right? No, the black not, ship not, is, is not literally made they, out of stuff to repel psychic energy. And the whole point not, is that they collect all of them. That's it. They just sail around and collect psychers. It's and not then the, the trash psychers. It's not the trash psychers. It's the psychers they can't train. If you're really powerful and they were able to capture you, they'll sacrifice you. If I you're it was the low level ones as well. I, I heard it was low well, level no, as well. It can't. They, they it's, just straight it's, burn it's, the low I'm, level ones though. Like I'm making. As I'm making the point that it's both. I'm making the point that oh, it's both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I said it's not necessarily. Level. I didn't tell you no. I said not necessarily. Basically, because yeah. you're saying you can't train low level. You can't train low level. They're right. not that useful. Right. If you're damaged goods, they're going to sacrifice you too. If they get you too late, like let's just say for whatever reason, if you're over the age of ten, they can't train you. Doesn't matter that you're powerful. They can't train you. They sacrifice you too. Yeah, definitely. There is no hard age set on it. Y- y- uh, I was just throwing out a. A thing, there right? Is, I yeah, just, exactly. I just wanted to put out that there is no hard age set or power threshold rating that one hundred percent determines this. There is an entire thing. Spoilers: Gaunt's Ghost. One of the characters turns out to be a psyker. It doesn't end well for said character. It mm. never does. <laughs> said character is already a full grown adult when they find this out. Mm. They don't end up sacrificing said character, but. Said character comes back as a sanctioned battle psyker. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Later, like like way later. Yeah, yeah. And the dude who reported him to the Inquisition feels super bad because the dude is a fucked up pile of meat now. 
So it's like a, almost a control thing. Like if you can control it. It's if you're trainable. That's It's yes. purely based off if you're trainable to be a controllable weapon. Right. So like Luke was. weaponize yeah. you. But like you use the analogy of a Jedi. It's like Luke was already too old to become a Jedi. But it was like Yoda's like, no, nah, you're still. You can learn. Yeah. But yeah, those, so long, that, those younglings that Anakin killed, not trainable. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because they're dead. Because wow. they're dead. Because they're dead so, as fuck. <laughs> that whole scene is pretty crazy. Cause, so it turns out that they, they had taken these guys, they turned them into psychers, and they bring them back to put them on the front lines. But they're not anywhere near even awake at that point. Mm-hmm. They've been, they keep them in cages. Yeah. And they tow them around on trailers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, do magic, bitch! Yeah, no, legit, with like a force. Legit, and then they have they have like commissars with taser, like cattle prod. That, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, so they do. Yeah, they do. They legit. That's how they're describing like this. It, yeah. They call them. It's like a train of battle psychers, and they would drive so they, them to wherever the front line, poke them, and hope that they mind do, blast do magic. the enemies. Do magic, bitch! Do magic. Yeah, exactly. Ah, and, uh, ah. It's actually I, super crazy. I picture like the the Jurassic Park raptor. Cage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, that's kind of what I was picturing too. A shooter. <laughs> Shoot 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 yeah, but actually, what ends up happening is the the commissar or whatever that reported the guy for being a witch, right, feels it in his brain that he's like, "Man, I need to go walk over there." And he walks over there and he recognizes the dude's face, but the dude has no more facial hair. His eyes are burned milky white. No hair on top of his head. A bunch of surgeries from where they fucked with his brain. Mm-hmm. You know, no teeth, can't speak, his tongue's been incinerated, and he's just, like, quivering on the floor of his cage. And the commissar walks up and immediately, like, has, like, a telepathy moment with him and just goes, I'm sorry, and caps him right there. Oh, damn. Yeah, because he, like, feels bad. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, well, the, I guarantee he, you that dude who's sitting there, the quivering mess, like, subconsciously is, like, brain fucking him. He's oh, like, yeah. you did this to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? no, he wasn't. So, obviously, the commissar was doing his duty. Right. But what sucked is the guy, the like his little like witch power that got him found out was helping everybody. Yeah, of course, yeah. Of course. But it wasn't even it wasn't like casting a spell. It was like a weird clairvoyance thing going. Yeah, on. yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of psychers and, are and, like that, where it's like even palm readers are considered yeah, psychers. Yeah, exactly. And so he and had her, something like that go on, and then the commissar basically overreacted to it and was like, "Witch!" To <laughs> and then redirect us into how they are part of the Exilia, though, and to kind of answer Marky's question before we tell the rest of the God's Ghost books. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Row and Pi Imperial assignments for psychers are no manifestation of psychic talent. There are negative levels of uh, registered psychic. talent. Then Omnicron, Xi, Nu, Mu, Lambda, and Kappa are unconscious and minor levels of psychic brain activity. This is kind of what you were talking about, Marky. Such low level of talents may only manifest in high stress experiences and remain beyond control of the individual. This is usually like, this is usually summed up as like, you have good luck. Or yeah, yeah you you always get out of the way of something, and then <laughs> luck is um, not a superpower. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Iota, Theta, and Eta are conscious and moderate levels of psychic talent. As the individual is able to control abilities with effort, this would the be like subjects palm of the reader lower or level. Or yeah. yeah, and they're usually th- this is usually at the point where they are considered true psychers, and they're under the jurisdiction of the Inquisition and the Adeptus Astra Telepathica. So we'll get more into this when we talk about the Adeptus Astra Telepathica and navigators and astropaths and all of the, the different types of psychers in general. Over that level, from the Iota all the way up level, oh my that's, when they, that's when they start dealing with how well they can be controlled. But then Pentacle you get stuff. to the top end, you get the betas and the alphas. These are exceedingly rare and dangerous. They are very difficult to control. They are easily possessed and they contain evolutionary markers, which can't be passed on to the rest of the uh, gene pool. And then the alpha plus people are like walking nukes. Primarchs so, and... No, these are like the people who are born with farseer levels of psychic potential. Like and the people who can fold cities in yeah. half. Yeah, but I They're, mean, like the emperor is considered like one of the top tier, uh, the top, the highest tier of yeah. psyker. So. And they're the ones, yeah, uh, I guess. Between yeah. between librarian, you're, so you're they're speaking more powerful from, than librarians. You're psychers. speaking from a black ship standpoint, not like a general well, standpoint. Yeah, 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 that's a good 
distinction to make. The Imperial assignments of positive psychic energy is not based on Primarchs and the Emperor. It is based on how dangerous people are. So an Alpha plus Psyker represents an immediate and catastrophic threat to the Imperium. Hmm. In Asshole theory, plus there plus. is <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. In theory, there is nothing that a trained Alpha plus Psyker cannot accomplish through their sheer force of will, from snapping a Titan in half to summoning a legion of greater demons. Representing such a great danger, the Inquisition usually executes Alpha plus psychers on site unless the possibility for capture is nearly assured. And then if you're captured, you're just sacrificed to the Emperor because you're too fucking dangerous. They don't turn these guys into sanctioned psychers. They fucking execute them. You play out. Ass, ass you fucking plus. wrecked. Asshole <laughs> But yeah, so sanctioned psychers end up in, that was what Kev was talking about with the guy from the Gaunt's Ghost books. They basically force these guys, they put them through training regime, and they force them to be walking weapons that can be directed by the commissarant to Commissary, do shit. But yeah, um, I, I like mine. Yeah, so battle psyker, it's not as cool as you think. It's not like a battle class you, you librarian. Think, like, like, like you're, when you think of it, you're like, oh, Gandalf, like, right. in, but yeah. in space. When in reality, Jedi, you're like a fucking a marshmallow Jedi. that yeah. fucking shoots out lightning bolts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are a weapon. You are Gollum. <laughs> Dan- you are a living Dance, weapon. witch. Yeah, Dance. You, you are Gollum that gets hit with an electric prod. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Till you and shit lightning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Till you shit lightning. <laughs> and I mean, there and are happened. other ones. Yes. like the. Yeah. <laughs> that's what makes the Primaris Psyker Diff- like, different. Right. Than like just, just battle shit psychers. Right. An astropath or whatever. Is, like it's called, or, right? well, so astropaths are typically there to relay messages between the ground and. And you can run those, right? You can run astropaths, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And astropaths also in, in tabletop use dope. their, their kind of like clairvoyance of being astropaths to be able to like figure out where enemies are hiding, ambushes, and oh, things so like, like that. Oh, so like almost like prescience or some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. They, they use their powers as like a support tool rather right. than an offensive tool. Uh, Whereas so then, but then Primaris psychers are like actual functioning people mm-hmm. they can walk around they l- can lead armies so can, more so than a battle psyker yeah but battle so psyker a than... meet in a cage that's like a sanctioned yeah. psyker so, gotcha. so a sanctioned psyker goes through a soul binding ritual with the emperor which is that's specifically designed off to protect and... it's it's designed to protect them from from possession by demonic entities of the warp and then they're sent into imperial guard regiments to act as the, the type of psyker and... that, that Kevin is talking about. The, the mm-hmm. Poke him with a stick, make him do a trick. There are yeah, other types of psychers, like primary psychers and stuff like that, are trained differently. They're trained by a different chunk of the school, and they have a lot more an- anonymity. And then the specialized psychers or the specialized psychic mutations like astropaths and navigators, as examples, are treated even differently. And, and navigators all of this... are genetic. That's like a genetic deviance within a noble house. So there, that's a whole like family yeah, where the line. alpha it's plus plus, plus is not thing. genetic. Right. This that's is, just a quirk no. of mutation. And, right. An alpha plus is in a hive city somewhere. Uh, a little kid has been seen that like whenever they get mad, stuff around them like gets set on fire. The black ships in the Inquisition and the way that psychers are treated is an allegory to the witch hunts of the 1600s. The, gotcha. the, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Or the, witch, or the witch hunters of fantasy. Yeah. yeah well, that's the exactly. Inquisition in general yeah. is pulled from the witch hunters of fantasy. The well, other well, thing is, is yeah. the Inquisition employs... And, and all of that is pulled both. from world history when we actually yes no 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 yeah just, real no, life <laughs> no i'm just touching base on how when we talked yeah. about the auxiliary it was like hobbits and shit right yeah, yeah, yeah. I- but also the inquisition employs these higher level psychers as inquisitors both eisenhorn mm. and ravener are both psychers right so obviously so they were uh, picked up at some point brought the, to the, the inquisition. one we just talked about greyhawk uh, greyhawk yeah grayfax 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 yeah. she's a psyker as well <laughs> thank you in fact yeah. most of the important inquisitors are mm-hmm. there's I think that it's the the one like super Puritan one isn't though Tiberius. Yeah. It's the the one in the no, power that's armor an ultramarine. that just like burn every. Is it is it no Tiberius? Tiberius is the ultramarine's chief librarian. He has a T no, name. T- Tycho's Blood Angels captain. So he doesn't know lore. You, you know, know you know you names. know what guy I'm talking about though. <laughs> yeah. You're you're picturing him in your head, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The guy with the no, fucking tattoo. It's on his not forehead. the guy with an eagle, is it? It might be. He like. 
fucking has like a cyber eagle. I want to It's the say. one with the tattoo of the Inquisition it, yeah. on his forehead instead of eyebrows. It's either right? that or it's the guy that's on the big ass chair. I can't the remember. The dreadnought chair. But either there's way, there's a really, really famous Inquisitor that's in power armor, and I swear his name starts with a T. I used to have the 54 millimeter model of him from the game probably, Inquisitor. Probably like Titus or something. Cause there's like, 50 yeah, it is Titus. I think it is Titus. Because I'm not surprised. There's like 50 million Tituses. It's Titus in Space Marine video game. Titus Ender was an Inquisitor, the Order Malleus, and former associate of Inquisitor Eisenhorn. They're grumpy at each other, and he does. He's got yeah. the. He's got is the. Co- he's got is it the. Cotias? Inquisitor hmm? Cotias? No, that's the like half Eldar guy. It, it's Titus Ender. Or maybe that's not Cotias. Maybe that's the other one. No. Guys, I just look. I just looked it up. Did you? Tom is there, right. Well, there's it's more Titus than one. I, I know. I was like, it's more <laughs> than this and this. Everybody's just ignoring me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I mean, I don't know Sykers, so it's fair. I understand. I mean, he's not on the tabletop, so I don't know. <laughs> he had but a model. There are, there, are, there are more Inquisitors in power armor is my point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he wears the there's red a, there's and gold a, power armor, right? There's a famous one. that He's in, like, black power armor. Oh, is he? Okay. There's somebody yeah. I saw who's in the red power armor. He's on the cover of the Inquisitor Martyr. book. No, that Inquis- the the old the old tabletop game Inquisitor. He's on the cover. Oh, okay. he's uh, he- yeah. Uh, I, I, we're we're off. I think we're off in the weeds trying to figure out who this dude is. Yeah, whatever. His dude is his Inquisitor. He's got some brain stuff. Magic space wizard. <laughs> space wizards. This is yeah, this some some psychers are at that point. If will. capable, drafted to the Inquisition, but that also relies on them being useful for a lot of things rather than just useful for poke it and make it do tricks. I will call right, him exactly. Galactic Gandalf. Galactic, <laughs> Galactic Gandalf. Gandalf the Galactic. I like it. I dig <laughs> it. That's dope as shit. That's really good. If I ever have a psyker in an army, that's so yeah. good to be his name. <laughs> an Inquisitor. Gandalf the Galactic? That's sick as fuck. <laughs> All the auxilia troops fit into the army in different ways. Psychers obviously provide all of the magical support, support artillery stuff that you might need. They get you into that psychic phase, something that the Tau don't know anything about. No, we know that we know that we don't. I was do about it. to say that Tom knows about <laughs> yeah, it. We know that we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows about risk. No, that's not true. That's not true. Tau do have some stuff for psychic. Believe it or not. Oh, that's a, true. Yep. That's true. The ethereal has like one spell, and no, you have like not, one item the, you can take as a the, deny, don't the you? The talisman of Arthas Malak is its name. Talisman of these nuts. Talking about that thing that makes you like deny a psychic power. Yeah, gives you a deny the witch roll. Yeah, whatever. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's stupid that it costs points, <laughs> but isn't it a relic? Yeah. It's considered a relic. It fucking sucks. My medallion. Talk, you want to talk Woo. about useless upgrades? My medallion. This yeah. took you 80 years to achieve. That's okay. I don't <laughs> like it anymore. Anybody get that reference? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, right. that's right. Die, that's right. devil bird. <laughs> that's, that's right. All right. Let me guess. Uh, is... White devil, white devil? <gasps> yes, you speak Hutu. <laughs> this is lovely pottery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guanabos. Go like the whole set. <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Sorry. I love that movie. Yeah, same. Uh, it's good. It's good. Anything else anything else on Imperial Guard that anything we left out, Kev? Hmm. By epi- did we cover everything <laughs> in six episodes? If you talk about Imperial nah. Guard on my Death Watch episode, <laughs> he will. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about it that we're all very guilty of is that you think he's going to be done. Like, you think he'd be burned out from talking. He's no. not. No. No. <laughs> no. Just like we all wouldn't be. In fact, he's probably just getting started. This was his fluffer nutter to his beginning. <laughs> he just got fluffed for five episodes. He's ready to rock now. Yeah. We, we love it's it, like, man. Thank, Goes thank, to 11, right? <laughs> yeah. Always. Right? Always. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank, shit, does thank that you mean that we have enough? asshole we plus have plus? F- Five more guard episodes. We've we've got yeah, six, and you just the first five. Yeah, no, he's going to talk about show. Imperial God, Guard. Shit. He's going to talk about Imperial Guard when we go over Gene Steelers. <laughs> the first five yes, episodes were for you, Ryan. Yeah, and then now it's my now sixth it's, one now was for him. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I uh, know oh, we got another five. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I was just say, I think the only thing we haven't really touched Imperial Guard wise is the Scholar Pagenium kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, like the Scholar Pagenia and the. Uh, Psyker, the, uh, I just, I just said it like a couple of minutes ago, the psych, psychia, telepath, telepathica, psychia or whatever. Yeah, it sounds about right. 
Scholastia Sicana. <laughs> just use, just throw yes. in a couple X's and you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll come back to talk about more institutes of the Imperium. The Skull of Progenia will get its own. Yeah, because com- commissars will get their own uh, focus, and we'll also talk a little bit about the Tempesta Scions in that episode, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Sisters of Battle because that's that's I, attached. I feels... really want to talk about the Assassins as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're I trained actually, in the same place, aren't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Officio Assassinorum. But do they train their something. their recruits out of the Scholar Progenium as well? No, they no? they have okay. different no. temples all over all over the place. But we basically. The Imperial Guard unlocked, as Tom put it, because he's so fucking right and it's aggravating. <laughs> I know, all of I'll these, keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> all of these, all of these, these first three that we talked about, they all unlock so much shit. The Imperial Guard unlocks so much about how the Imperium works on its own. Just like the Eldari unlocked like four factions. There's four factions of the Eldari we haven't even talked about yet. And there's so much in the Imperial Guard and the Imperium that we haven't talked about yet. Stuff that Orc comes Lord, back in, which we still Orc, haven't whatever. covered. Orcs hey. don't. The orcs don't have history. What are you talking about? You know who I do want to talk about, actually, more, more or less for the aspect of learning myself, but for Necron. Yeah, I'm getting really excited to do the War in Heaven and the Necron because I like it a lot. <laughs> we'll be we'll be back uh, when we cover Chaos Space Marines. When we cover Normal Space Marines, we'll definitely touch on different parts of Guard lore. When we talk a little bit more about Chaos, we'll talk about the Lost and the Damned. That's the Traitor Guard side of all of this. If there's anything that we left out of the Imperial Guard episodes, a regiment that you guys maybe know about that you want to let us know about, or maybe even some of your own lore, we are all ears and would love to hear that stuff. Imperial Guard history is Imperial history. It's a good nickname yeah. for Kevin, the Guard Lord. The God. Instead the guard of Star Lord. Lord, it's Guard Lord. God Lord. <laughs> so. So yeah, share that lore with us. Also, get us those ghost stories or any questions you have about this episode or any other episode by emailing us at underthehiveofmadness at gmail.com or jimdarkgaming at gmail.com. Join and get a little bit more involved with us and our community over on Discord. We have channels set up so you can talk about your hobby progress. You can debate official GW lore. You can share your own homebrew lore. And we also talk about things like tactics and just other various parts of the Warhammer 40k hobby. We also do some general hobby stuff. There's RC channel. There's a bunch of video game channels. There's a lot of cool, fun stuff. We uh, we share recipes and food. We also have a community (laughs) writing project where we develop the lore for our own hive. That's always something to check out. Uh, We're developing more of that as we move forward. You can also find us around the internet, various places like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We have a link tree set up for you guys in the interim while we get our website set up. You can help the podcast grow by liking and reviewing us wherever you get your podcast fix. We are on quite a few platforms, including Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher. If you want to be a little bit more involved and help us grow, you can find us on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash under the hive of madness. All Patreon members get access to video podcasts with minimal editing a day early. So you can see our beautiful faces as well as hear all of the mistakes and bloopers that get cut out of final episodes. You also get access with Patreon to our quarterly painting contest, but we have a couple of other perks, art polls, other things just for you guys to kind of look at. We're trying to do some giveaways a couple times a year, just stuff like that. We very much all would. I think we all recommend you go check out our Patreon. Yes, please. Our (laughs) Patreon. That's right. Yes. Please check out Ryan's art and uh, any voting that we do for future episodes. If you guys want to hear about uh, the Officio Sassanorum or my Death Watch or Tom's Tau or uh, Ryan, uh, we, we already covered some of Ryan's lore. But if you want to hear about any of that stuff, you want to hear about toes? We actually, yeah, yeah, give us money. Yeah, we try to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> We try to do a faction series before we talk about faction specific, our faction specific lore. So, Kev, you're on the spot because we're going to have to talk about your Imperial Guard lore here soon. We are going to have to talk about my Imperial Guard lore. Brainstorm episode. It's rapidly growing. It's getting into my territory and I don't like it. The the question, I'd say the question with mine is, do we want to save my lore for rogue traders? We could. You You get your own episode, Kevin. You looks already like got I'm getting, five It episodes. looks like I'm getting ten, boys. <laughs> uh, Guys, I think we, I think we've lost. I think it's, it's all done. 
<laughs> the podcast is all. I was to say it's Kevin's <laughs> podcast. Now. They, they, his kids now. Welcome, welcome to Under the Hive of Kevin. <laughs> Under the Hive of Imperial Guard, Guard Lord. <laughs> under Hive Auxilia. Under Hive Auxilia. Oh, Jesus Christ. Under, under, under Hive. <laughs> The takeaway is that we've got a lot of episodes planned that Kevin's going to talk about. Garden. Just, mm-hmm. just remember, Mark, you you've already ordained yourself as a comic relief. Nobody gives a fuck what you say. Yeah, I know. That's what, that's what we'll get we'll get into space I marines. I and, and I fuck Mark. Man. You know what, Mark? You you can have five episodes of your stuff when you listen to more than just one audiobook. I've listened to Whoa. more than one. Whoa. I've only listened to maybe one 40k oh. one. I That's what I mean. 40k audio. You YouTube, didn't specify. YouTube channels count as their own books, even they, if it's a ten minute segment. Before these gents tear themselves apart arguing over books here in the archive, I think it's time that we sign off as six six five dot six six UHMR Gemrat Radio. Radio. Read a fucking book, Remember, Kevin. Remember, if you have... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's what I said to you a couple episodes uh, ago. What are you doing? What was that? Read a fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be my sign-off. No, no f- motherfucker. I got the sign-off. Remember, it's been raining cats and dogs for the last couple of weeks, which means that there's probably more than one or two four-armed emperors up in your roof, so, you know, don't don't go up there and poke around. That's it, just, it's all, it's, it's what I'm warning, what I'm warning. They get in all the nooks yeah. and crannies. Nooks and crannies. All up in that booty. Read a fucking book! <laughs>